How old's the roof on your home? If it's over 15 years old, how much longer will it last before the leaks begin? Think about the damage. Then think about this. If it's time for a new roof, call Sears to get your roofing done right. And if you call Sears right now, you'll save $500. Just call 1-877-938-1414. Sears licensed fully insured contractors install a variety of shingles and styles that are built for long-lasting performance. And you'll save $500 if you call now. So call Sears for a free in-home consultation. 1-877-938-1414. Hurry. Offer ends soon. Not available in all states. Installation provided by Sears authorized licensed contractors. License information available upon request. So if you need a new roof, call Sears Roofing. Call right now and save $500. Call 1-877-938-1414. That's 1-877-938-1414. Sears. You always give me the look. You always give me the look because we're about to get sued. We're not about to, you always bring it right to the point where they can sue us. We're at 35, 36, I think we're good. Okay, all right. We are. We'll stop it right there. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. It is Sunday night, 7 o'clock, Frank the Unicorn radio program. You got Frank the Unicorn with me as always, co host Beans. Yellow. And we have a very uh, special, 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 special treat for everyone this week because. We have local Coral Springs band Goodman in the studio with us today. Guys, say hi. Hello. 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 Inter- introduce Good yourselves morning. to the audience, please. Uh, my name is Drew. I am Jimmy. And I'm Josh Goodman. All right. And uh, these guys are going to rock out for us. Uh, they're going to be interacting with us throughout the show. They've got some. They've got some cool uh, effects that we're not. We don't normally do the sound effects on the show. But I think it's going to add some, some good humor to it. I, I like it. And after this, we're not going to be able to let them leave. We're going to have to keep them. Yeah, the we're going to have to bring them back have, in. We're going to have to steal the keyboard. Yeah. That's where all the magic is. Yeah, we're, well, we'll have to bring all you guys back. Cause we, can't just, we can't just have one. We've got to have the whole collective group, right? Um, you, can, you can rent each one individually. I think that can work. <laughs> all right. Well, so, all right. And, uh, we'll take a lease with an option to buy. Yeah, you there, right. there you go. All right. So we've got a ton of stuff on the show tonight. Tons. Um, tons. We always have a ton of stuff. Tons. We always say that. So we've got a, 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 as I say, a ton of stuff. It's a, it's a Thanksgiving themed episode. We're gonna we're, with all due respect to the, the band, it does not count towards the theme of turkeys because they're you know they're not turkeys. They're actually really good. So How do you know? Perhaps they're, they're delicious roasted. They could be. Which the disturbing thing you know. Are either actually, of you stuffed with a duck, stuffed with a chicken? No, 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 no. or wrapped in bacon. So, so did you, there's actually unicorn meat. You can buy canned unicorn meat at thinkgeek.com. And initially, it was uh, some sort of congealed sparkly substance, which was inedible, but appeared that it may be edible. Congealed sparkly uh, substance. Seriously, they got in some kind of trouble for it, and they were they got a cease and desist. Now you can buy the same thing. I think that's how they Except created Miley Cyrus in the lab. <laughs> it's a vivisected uh, stuffed unicorn in a can, which I'm so against. Everyone's against vivisecting unicorns. See, it's a bad idea. So that would be a great band name. Is it, Is it organic? organic? What's that? Is it organic? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, well, it's cotton. I guess it could be considered organic, depending on how it's grown. Uh, is it a free-range, farm-raised unicorn? I, I, well, see, but, you know, we know the truth, which is that those are not unicorns, because unicorns are not equine. We say that, I say that every week. You just like to use the word equine. I do like to use the word equine. All right. Uh, but we have a ton of stuff going on. So we've got, we're going to talk about the top ten, uh, ten uh, most dangerous holiday toys. Irving Mainway style. Nice. Yes. Uh, well, what's hilarious is most of them are all guns. So how anyone could think, hey, you know what we should do? Make a gun that shoots actual projectiles and market it to children and, and think that that would not be considered a dangerous toy. Why would you say that's a bad thing? Have you met children? <laughs> Here we go with our second thing. All right. Uh, I have met children. Okay. Uh, not the same way you do with a van or candy, but whatever. Well, I mean, um, it's an ice cream van. They we're like gonna, me. Yeah. We're going to talk about Burlesque the movie. Uh, we were at the. I was at the special sneak preview. I'm sorry, um, I missed that. That's that's all right. I'm no, not sorry I missed not. that, but I'm sorry you're, I missed that all not. at the same time. You're not okay. Um, we have a very special. Last week we had robot Christopher Walken in the studio. Uh, really, still with the robots? I thought we were yeah. Well, now we've got robot Hank Hill. Really? Yeah, we do. We do. 
So if you've got questions for Robot Hank Hill, you want to talk to him, you can call but in 347-326-9700. Because it just adds another element. Does it? Yeah. We might have too many elements. A forgotten element no one's going to really care about, but it adds another <laughs> element. Um, we've got uh, some updates, new updates on the website, a great update with a unicorn singing Michael Bolton, which is really fun. I don't think you could use great and Michael Bolton in the same sentence. I think those have to be separate. I think there's legally you're required to separate those well, by some sort of punctuation. If you, if you use the word not... I guess that can in work. In a sentence, if you just use the word not in front of great with Michael Bolton in a sentence, <laughs> that, yeah, that can work. That's that, 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 it, it depends on the that. context. But uh, what's great about it is not that it's Michael Bolton. It's great that it's a unicorn singing Michael Bolton with, with an owl playing a rock guitar solo. That makes everything awesome. It does. A uh, big anthropomorphic owl. Only way it could be better if it was Stripes Jackson. All right, I quit. Yeah, uh, all right. Well, don't quit yet because you're gonna you're gonna be glad to know that we're not doing any Swanto jokes tonight. I, I still can't believe that someone talked you into that. Well, it's not that anyone talked me into it so much as I ran out of Squanto jokes. There's only so many things that you can make into into a Squanto joke to make it funny. That you know, it, it's just so really for the Thanksgiving show is where you run out of Squanto jokes. Can you believe it? That's I could rehash the old one. I don't think you should though. Okay, but I won't. But all right. Uh, we're going to do what you're watching. This is the turkey edition, so we're going to talk all about bad turkey-type movies. Indeed okay. in, this, in this respect, I want to narrow the focus a little bit. Movies that, while they weren't still, meant to be awful. Right, they weren't meant to be completely terrible. They, they, they thought that they were making some kind of decent film. So no Killer and, Snowman movies. Right, of course. No, no Killer no Snowman. No Shark to Pie. No, no Shark to Puss this week. Uh, I'm sorry to say. Although I think the Shark to Puss may make a couple appearances in the, in the Unicorn list. You never know. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but there's a whole ton of Kevin Spacey on my pre-list. There. Which is kind of sad, because I like Kevin Spacey, I, I like but Kevin, you're right, he's made he's some made poor some choices. really bad films. Uh, it's almost as if Kevin Spacey says, I've made one good film, now it's time to make five pieces of crap. So, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think we can say the same about Nick Cage. Over yeah, I, I would we definitely that. can. Yes, we definitely can. As, as someone who watched there. Knowing on purpose this weekend, I can tell you that yes, well, we can. Yes, yes, how he, he I told you. Through. He does, you know, I think it's because Nicolas Cage, unlike Kevin Spacey, Kevin Spacey pretty much kind of sticks to the same monotone sort of, you know, character, uh, whereas Nicolas Cage always goes completely out and does something completely unexpected. You know, okay, here's here's what we're going to do. And not always for the best. Right, not always for the best. Well, here, here you go, Nicolas Cage. You're going to play Superman. Oh, okay, all right. So so I'm going to play Superman as an alcoholic child molester who's got to <laughs> escape from his planet Krypton. And he starts over on Earth, right, as a superhero. So, like, make up for all of that stuff he's done. No, I don't I don't think that's going to work, Nicolas Cage. All right, all right, fine. How about this? How about this? All right, Superman, okay, he, he, he comes to Earth, and, uh, and, and he can only get a job in adult movies. No, no. Not Actually, I would fine. totally go see that movie. I would go see that movie too. Not a not a bad Nicolas Cage by the Unicorn, I might add. Not bad. That was very, very I was impressed. Thank you. I like applause. All right. So uh, then, obviously, a little bit later on, we're going to get to our local music segment. You guys are going to do some some songs for us. I'm really excited about that. This is the first time we've had other in studio guests, but not actually performing music live. So it'll be really really cool. So you're historic. You're our first in house band. Are we really? True. <laughs> And, and also, too, uh, Josh has a super sweet ovation that I'm really jealous about where we kind of bonded for like a quick moment, real quick before the show, about uh, 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 ovation guitars because we love them. Uh, and so, as I said, how unicorn are you? We're going to do This Week in Bacon. We've got a great bacon recipe, a new bacon recipe for you. Um, also, we're going to discuss the greatest of all bacon-related inventions. Are we? And it was, re- it was invented by a 12-year-old girl. What, wasn't everything that's great? That sounded very wrong. Sorry for that. I apologize. <laughs> Again, with the band and the candy. All right. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we've had a lot of requests for this. Um, Someone sent me a link to bacon vodka. Bacon vodka. All right. Yeah. So we, and we've had a lot of requests for this because we haven't done it in a little while, but there's a new Cosmo. Indeed, there is. I'm holding it up Letterman style the way you all You see are, it. as okay. though there's a camera. Right, there's not. Uh, although we're going to, you know what, there is going to be a camera a little bit later because when Goodman, our in studio guest, perform, we're going to videotape it. And that way we can post it on the Frank the Unicorn YouTube channel. Sweet. So that'll be awesome. Um, so yeah, we've got the we've got the new Cosmo, Julia Stiles, who disappeared forever and is now back. She's uh, back. I think you know what I think it is. I think she actually just was living as Erica Christensen for a while, <laughs> and and then she that career went nowhere. So she said, okay, now I've Very got good. to do something else. Let me go back to being Julia Stiles. Which one of them was in the Bourne movies? That was Julia Stiles. That was Julia Stiles. Yeah. Okay, I really truly can't tell them apart. 
Most people can't, <laughs> including Joseph Gordon-Levitt, which I understand led to some issues and problems when they were dating. Nice. They, that was total. That was total speculation on my part. I'm, I'm starting false rumors. That's Sorry, we, we know you're listening, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. No, we are going to get that. Don't go all Commander on. We will absolutely. If you okay. want to talk about her now, we certainly can. No, I'll wait. I'll wait. All right. <laughs> uh, if you're Julia Stiles or you want to talk about it, three four seven three two six nine seven zero zero. You can uh, also email us show at frankunicorn.com, and you can reach us on Twitter at Frank Unicorn. So uh, now that we've gotten through our uh, our initial run through of what we're going to discuss. Let's get into real quick these top 10 holiday uh, toys. These are the most dangerous toys. I'm fascinated by this because this is always one of my favorite sketches on the early Saturday. Yeah, that's uh, Christmas story. It, it, yeah, absolutely. In fact, this is so the shoot your, eye out, shoot your eye out list. Uh, yeah, your shoot your eye out list. It? Which, it should be fairly soon that TBS will be broadcasting yeah, Christmas story 24, 24 hours, hours a day, day, right? I think it's Christmas Eve and Christmas Day they do it the whole Is it? I mean, it's on pretty much every day, you know, maybe not 24 hours, but they broadcast it continuously until Christmas. As they should. Uh, they, they should. should. They should. The, and not many people know the great Bob Clark directed that movie. Yeah. Also directed Porky's. Indeed. So quite the... Uh, and Black Christmas. Yes. Quite the, quite the trilogy of, uh, of films for Bob Clark. <laughs> you know, uh, Porky's is actually a pretty underrated movie. Porky's is a, we talk about how much we love Porky's all the time. It, it holds up you well. You enjoy Porky's too. I do not. I have no problem with Porky's too. Por- the third one, Porky's Revenge, I can see, There's, you know, yeah. you can leave that one out of the box. Set. But Porky's 2 is not a bad flick. You know, if they remade Porky's now, it would be, contra- they'd be contractually obligated to make the movie about Steven Seagal. Did you know that? <laughs> True. Uh, all right, so this, actually this is a toy Seagal would buy for his kids. Five Years Split Blaster. It's a dart gun. It's a dart gun that the, 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 the barrel opens up and you can fire d- darts. Like you can fire ways. around corners? <laughs> right. It's a bit too realistic. It is. I mean... This is, you know, come on. Uh, with enough force to potentially cause eye injuries. It says that on the box. It says that on the box. That's just wonderful. All right. Uh, let's see. Lady Bell, four to five. Robots for Hank Hill. Favorite propane-related holiday gifts? Well, I'm sure there's going to be one on the list. Uh, well, you know what? There could be. Um, what's Hank Hill's favorite related propane-related holiday gift? Uh, well, that's a good question. Uh, I would say that any type of propane or propane-related accessory would be a fine purchase. There you go. I think we should get the walking back. You think so? All right. Well, we'll see. Maybe we can get them next week. Um, okay. This is the Super Splat Splat Blaster. Again, it's just Splat a gun. Splat. It's I just like the spelling on potential that. Potential for eye, face, or other injuries. High velocity Splat Balls. Uh, so <laughs> you know, I, I have that one. Premature, premature paintball. Yeah. yeah. This is like just uh, p- paintball for toddlers. A little bit of penicillin to take care of your is, Splat Balls. While the packaging advises children to use the supply safety glasses at all times, other instructions on the same packaging actually state that the glasses cannot provide any actual protection. <laughs> Do not taunt happy fun ball. Right. It's like you buy a bulletproof vest and it says on warning. Don't no not stop bullets. bullets. Right. Yeah. Point it is. It makes me Someone bring a some knife to a gunfight? Great. That's perfect. Because I have a bulletproof vest. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, buzz magnets. These are literally just magnets, uh, just very powerful. Who gives magnets, magnets as a Christmas present? I, 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 I actually had a pair of those. Did you? Yes, they were awesome. What did you swallow them? Who gave um, them to you? My mom. Okay. The Christmas present. We should call her. So there you go. Who gets there? You go. You have your answer. Who gets you, magnets? You from? actually got these very magnets as your as a Christmas yes, present. Yes, they they were <laughs> they were extremely powerful. I but you okay. You're a guitarist, so like I I I don't know if you experiment with magnets. When you play, like making your own pickups or anything like that, have you ever messed around with anything like that? Because I've I've done a couple things like that. I've done a thing, you know, where I go out and try to find the biggest neodymium magnet I can, and you know, put ten of them in a row and wrap them with coil and try to make a pickup out of it. Never works. No, I'm I'm not much of a mad scientist when it comes to that sort of thing, but that does sound rather rad. (laughs) Well, I mean, because this could be something aside from the shape. Uh, I could see where that could, you know, you could potentially use those for that. Although, can I, I just stop the show for a moment to say I really want a T-shirt that say that does sound. I want a T-shirt that says that does sound rather rad. Okay, that was some awesome word wording. Speaking, right speaking of T-shirts, we also have our, our uh, store posted on Cafe Press, so now you can buy your your Frank Unicorn gear. You can buy you can buy your we, T-shirts, your your tile coasters, and your uh, journals, your nerd journals. There, your official Frank Unicorn products. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and the link for that's on the website. Too. Referring Sorry, back to magnets, Josh is a magnet to ladies. 
Nice. Yeah. One might say that. Beans has that problem, too. Yeah. yeah. You got the beans working. Only its opposite pole. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh... Kung Fu Panda Sword of Heroes. Toy Sword based on popular Kung Fu Panda movie. Made of rigid plastic and can cause serious injuries if it makes an impact on the person's face. Listen, almost anything made of rigid plastic. Wiffle ball. Wiffle ball, wiffle ball bat, any toy guitar, whatever. Can G.I. Joe uh, vehicle, Transformer. Right, but, but kids aren't slicing at each other with G.I. Joe vehicles and Transformers. That's true, but they could. So if you're talking about could cause potential serious injuries... Any toy that you take that you strike your face hard enough with, even Play-Doh, could potentially injure you. But still, that thing looks rough. Some kids are going to be like playing Highlander the home game with that thing. It does, well, speaking of the guy, from the guy who has the Highlander sword in his closet. Uh, but, you know, if, yeah, if you buy your kid a big plastic uh, uh, sword and tell him to go hit his friends, you know there's going to be problems. Yes. Um, the so Tugboat Play Center. looks amazing. I wish I had it. it it's, it's an inflatable tugboat. Shows the kids in the tugboat. It has... It's like a little ball pit that you keep at home. That looks awesome. Yeah, except it's not uh, meant for, uh, it's not supposed to be a flotation device. And the fear is that some uh, idiot parent will actually believe that this tugboat will be a safety device for their child in the pool. <laughs> some of this just has to fall in the area of consumer responsibility. Don't yeah. buy your three-year-old a gun. You know what I mean? Uh, don't, don't buy him a splat gun. This one's funny. My first mini cycle, right? Uh, plastic, first of all, it's 15 bucks. You know, you know there's a problem when you're buying a mini cycle. For your kid, and it's only $15. Where's the big wheel when you need it? Right. The big wheel is awesome, especially with the lever. You know there's a company that makes adult big wheels now? Adult big wheels? Yeah. They I, have to go, I have to go purchase yeah, one right they, Yeah, now. they do. And they're, they're like steel frame, and they have the brakes, the super brakes on them, so you can do spin outs and all kinds of tricks. Really, really cool stuff. <laughs> um, this is uh, basically, it's so low to the ground, it can create a fall hazard if used outdoors. Despite the fact toy instructions say the toy requires use of a helmet, the child pictured on the box is not wearing any safety gear. It, it says it was sold at Toys R Us. It was. It was. Off the market. Off the market. Apparently, if they had put a, a helmet on this kid, it would have been fine on the box. Um, let's see. I, I don't let's see how many more of these we've got to go through. These are a pull-along caterpillar. So, that breakaway pull string. Breakaway pull string. Yeah, that's really smart. Give your kids something they can asphyxiate themselves with. Why don't you give them a... Why don't you give Tyco's plastic bag toy? At that, that at that point, it's natural selection, right? you know? The kid who's, like George Carlin used to say, the kid who swallows too many marbles doesn't grow up to have kids of his own. And, and thus the Ig Noble and the, uh, the Darwin Awards were born. Yeah. Uh, and then Animal Alley Pony. <laughs> Animal Alley Pony. Because, because, that sounds like some kind of pony prostitute. That's, because they have long, fiber-like hair that's easily removable, creating the possibility of injuries of ingested. Do not eat your horse. Don't eat your horse. That's what it says. Right. Yeah. Yes. Don't munch on My Little Pony. Again. Or the just, tie of My Little Pony. Now, now this one that. just, Big Bang Rocket. <laughs> if you buy your kid a product called Big Bang Rocket, you've got to expect there could be some danger involved. Although what's ridiculous about this is that um, the loud noise produced by the, so this is their complaint. Not, not that it's a rocket. Right, yeah, not that it's a rocket. But that the loud noise produced by the toy is comparable to the noise made by a cat gun can cause damage to hearing if misused. So don't I mean like so if, don't launch it next to your head. Like someone did to me when I was a kid where they took the cap gun and put it right next to my ear and right. fired it off. While you had a hearing aid in, I, turned all the way up. I might as well have. That was the loudest thing I've ever heard to this day. You've never been on a plane, have you? I have. Uh, well, no, I, actually that's not true. The loudest thing you've heard to this day, and I can tell you this for, for experience, was... Uh, the Gold Gold Bordello concert that we went to. That yeah, was that was loudest. pretty darn loud. There's nothing. That was that was the Big Bang. That was as loud as the Big Bang. <laughs> it created another. But, yeah, I was just gonna so say loud. it might have created another world right there in the one. venue. Yeah, this one is hilarious. Walker Root two aluminum stilts. I want those. Made for children as young as five years old. Uh, <laughs> always remain in control yeah, of motion. instructions advising the user to always remain <laughs> in control of their motion. That's easy to do on stilts. Everything's especially, easy to especially do. Especially when you're five. Five-year-olds can't control their balance standing up, you know, in their bare feet. Which doesn't appear to be a plausible request for a five-year-old using stilts. No, it does not. Uh, <laughs> five if, you buy your, if you buy your five-year-old well, stilts. Where's the pogo stick coming in? Uh, you would think. I, you know, I actually had an old-school pogo stick, and let me tell you, it was damn dangerous. Is there a new-school pogo stick? Oh, yeah, dude. dude you haven't seen the new-school ones that let you jump like 25 feet in the air? Spring. They're huge. I didn't know they had more spring. I think. Yeah, yeah they've, got, they've got a curved, resistant spring, and it actually creates more lift when you when you jam down on it. Like, even more dangerous. Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can kill yourself on one of those things. We may have and to trust test me, that out. I've almost killed myself on plenty of pogo sticks. We may have to have a pogo stick race, race pre-Christmas. 
No, I've seen. Have you seen the pogo shoes? Uh, I have. Not, not pogo shoes, but I saw a lady uh, fast walking in them, and uh, that was different. I just they're like the like the the moon bounce shoes for adults. Yes, like exactly. yeah, yeah, they're they're ridiculous. I mean, they're you know again, anytime you're gonna you're gonna take anything that's going to to compromise your natural dexterity, it's like riding a unicycle. Tell me someone to be careful riding a unicycle. You can't be friggin' careful riding a unicycle. It's a damn unicycle. <laughs> There's one wheel on it. Okay? You've got no no chance of recovery. Oh, come on. That, that, that bear has no problem riding a unicycle. The bear has no problem. Yeah, it. You'll get that. <laughs> oh, my. All right. Uh, so let's move up. Burlesque the movie. Saw Burlesque the movie. How was Burlesque the movie? It was paint by numbers. It was literally paint by numbers. I, I left the movie... An hour into the movie. Do you mean okay. Cher and Christina Aguilera didn't star in a movie that was totally innovative? Well, he, no. Here's the thing, though. Hear me out on this because it's it, it was paint by numbers and it was very generic in, in the plot execution. In fact, essentially what they did was they took Coyote Ugly and they put Cher in it and they changed a couple things. Ah, and almost songs. yeah, almost like they took Showgirls and Coyote Ugly and sort of mixed them into a better film than those two were. So let's just say that. It would have to be. But it would have, of course. Um, but it, I, I left the movie and I, I was there for an hour. I had to leave for an emergency. I came back to the theater just in time to see everyone sure, walking out. Sure, was an emergency. It was. And I told everyone exactly what happened in the parts that I missed. And I wasn't wrong. I was 100% correct. Although, music, excellent, obviously. Uh, dance routines actually were really well done. And, and it did present a good picture of what burlesque is actually about. It wasn't sleazy. You know, there, there wasn't a lot of, there was no real gratuitous, uh, you know, salacious material in it. It was, it was very There was gratuitous done. share. It was very tastefully, well, gratuitous share is fine. It was, it was tastefully done. Well, she's well lit in this movie. It's not, you know. <laughs> she um, would have to be. It's, of course, it's, it was tastefully done, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, so I would say that, you know, if you go to this movie, or if you're going to go to this movie, which I can't not recommend it, but if you're going to go and see it, it's one of those kind of films where you know what to expect. You're there to see the dancing. You're there to see the performances. You're not there for plot. You're not there for acting. Although the acting, truthfully, Stanley Tucci was in it. He was great. You know, God loves Stanley Tucci. I knew those guys. Um, Stanley Tucci is always great. Stanley Tucci was, was probably, for me, the best part of the movie. Although the one area where I thought that they really, really missed was that they had Alan Cumming in the movie, which if you're going to have a movie called Burlesque, you think the first guy you're going to cast is Alan Cumming, put him in some eyeliner or a bowler hat, you're good. It's exactly what they did, and then... He's in two scenes. No way. They totally wasted it. Oh. Totally wasted it. We've got a pop-in visit in the studio. Julie's walking into our studio. Hi, Julie. Hi. Say hi. Hello. All right. You're, you're actually live on the air right now. Well, hello. It's okay. <laughs> this is what happens when you walk in the middle of a, of a segment, but that's okay. World, um, Julie, Julie, world. That's right. And uh, all right. So let's let's jump into, because that's pretty much what I my main watching experience was this week, was, was going to see Burlesque, which, by the way, we had a great turnout. Um, we actually gave away quite a large number of tickets, and cool. and uh, unfortunately, we, we gave away so many tickets, we had to turn a few people away at the door, which was sad. But I will say this, Cinemark Palace in Boca is a class act all the way, because if people showed up with their burlesque passes, even if they couldn't get into that film, they were kind enough to give people, uh, the people that came, passes to another film, a film of their choice that was showing that night. Nice. Harry Potter. Yeah, so, well, unfortunately not Harry Potter, although we did see... We did see the line for Harry Potter, and it started forming even, uh, it was a midnight showing of it, they were doing the preview, and the line was there from like 5 o'clock, and it was huge. It was wow. huge. And everyone was in costume. There were so many people in robes and, and whatnot, um, which is weird, because like, they were all like 15, 16, and I'm thinking, aren't you going to download this movie on your iPhone next week? <laughs> like, isn't that what's going to happen? You it, have to... they, they have the respect as fans, like I could say, for Star Wars, or never, never, well, Okay, I, I, I agree. When episode, episode three, I was in line, right after school, went straight to the movie theater, second in line. Kind of disappointed. I um, I was also very, we, see, we could add, those, those could be considered turkeys, uh, the new Star Wars movies. <laughs> Indeed, what? Right. Right. Episode one. Yeah. Turkey. No. Yeah. Come on. Definitely not. Episode three, if only for Darth Vader, crane shot overhead. No! no! Right, that, that was, that was I mean, we could put Jar Jar Binks. Uh, you know, we could charge our base. Yeah, we could get into well, a whole lot. Well, thankfully, he dies on all the wrong ones. I would like to believe that, <laughs> and I would like to believe he he actually gets hit with the laser blast from the Death Star, preferably <laughs> while he's, he's preferably, preferably while he's leaning over an 
this jar and it hits him right in the in the Jar Jar Binks hole. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's a visual. Jar Jar Binks hole? Uh, yes, it is. Hashtag Jar Jar Binks hole. That's a good one. I need to draw a picture. I think you should actually do that. Hey, there was rumors that there was going to be an episode seven, eight, and nine too. I've heard that too, um, but I, I and you know I would of course I would still be there at midnight for all three of them, just like you guys probably would be right there in line with me. We'd all be there together. Um, yeah, I mean I, that's the kind of movie. Yes, I would definitely go and support. I will be there for Star Wars 3D, and I'm going to make you yeah. be in line with me for that one too. Are you? Yeah. yeah. But aren't, aren't they starting with the new trilogy? Wait, Star Wars 3D. Well, I'll wait until they get to episode 4. They're not remaking them. They're just releasing them in 3D. 3D, yep. Not very hard to do. It won't be, unfortunately, it wasn't shot with a 3D camera, so it won't be the, the best 3D, but it'll be... It'll be like Clash of the Titans, where yes, everything's exactly. just blurry and dark. What they did was just, <laughs> well, they just edited, edited it in 3D. And yeah, but I, I think just seeing the movie in theaters is pretty amazing, too. Well, I, I agree. It's worth it. Well, when, they, when they released the special edition... The that first trilogy in the oh, yeah. 90s. Yeah, 97, 97, 97, 97, 97. I, I was there. Me I saw too. all those too. So it was, and as a seven years old, think about it, me seven years old going to see something. I was in college and now I'm going to go cry. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> going to see that as well, seven years old. I, I actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date myself here. I actually saw the original Star Wars in the theater <laughs> on the <laughs> original <laughs> release. I wasn't seven, I was two. We're sure. talking about Return of the Jedi. No, no, no. We're talking about Star Wars. I mean, I saw Return of the Jedi 2 and Empire. I saw all three of them in the theater, you know, and, and it was a different experience in those days because you did have to stand in line and it was a big pain in the butt and, you know, you got more you got more Twizzlers in your pack, which was good. There was, there was, no, there was no Fandango. <laughs> there was no Fandango. There was no online ticketing. It was a it was a whole different world. All right. Uh, 347-326-9700. Let's talk turkeys uh, there, Beans. Let's indeed. All right. So we've got two sets of, of turkeys because... On the beans list tonight, which we're going to get to after we get to, to who, who, what we're watching, which I want to hear about some of the bad turkeys you've watched and the bad movies you've watched. Oh, been boy, at, have I. Uh, this week. But we're going to talk about, on the beans list, the roasted turkeys, which would be the... the which is unfairly roasted turkeys, which is movies that people, uh, they have a bad reputation. They got bad reviews. People didn't go see them for whatever reason, but they're actually damn good movies. Those are the ones we're going to talk about on the beans list. But let's talk about the bad ones first. Oh, let's. Let's talk about actual turkeys. So hashtag turkey films. So I see the first one you have listed here. I actually think it's a halfway decent movie. Though. Ishtar? Ishtar is really, really not Ishtar that Ishtar is like the king of turkey movies. That's it's like the highlight at the top of the list. Because it didn't make any money. But at the same time... Had it you, didn't, you know why it didn't make any money? Because it was terrible. It really wasn't that bad. Warren Beatty and Dustin Hoffman. Hoffman playing lounge singers. Yep. Directed by Elaine May. Yeah, it's really with Charles Rodin and Isabella Gianni. It's basically a, uh, an update of the Hope and Crosby Road movies. Just Without all that pesky talent that Hope and Crosby had. Or chemistry. Or are, humor. Or are, are you saying that Warren Beatty and Dustin Hoffman are untalented? I'm saying that they do not have the talented... I'm saying that they don't have the, the, the road chemistry and the talent musically that Hope and Crosby had. I'm saying Ishtar... And I met Bob, uh, Bob Hope, sir. I know. Uh, I'm not saying that Ishtar is a movie that will change Ishtar. your life. I shook his hand and he pooped himself. And <laughs> still... He was going to do that anyway. Man. I'm, not, funny. I'm not saying that it's a great movie. Well, it's not a movie that's going to change your life. You know, It's not a movie that's spectacular. But it's really not as bad as its reputation insists. I will say this. you have. I would defy you to sit through it and not you, laugh. You, you, you do have... I would laugh because I don't I mean at it. I mean movie. actually I, with it. When's the last time you saw it? Well, here's the thing. Because it's I, not on DVD. I, I will say this. You, you are. In, you do have someone in your corner. Gary Larson, cartoonist for the Far Side, actually said he he had done a cartoon about Ishtar, and he actually came out later and said after watching the movie, "Hey man, I really of all the cartoons I've done making fun of all the things I made fun of, this is the one I regret because Ishtar is actually not that bad." Uh, so I didn't know you were actually Gary Larson, too. Yeah. Uh, Deep in Your Tonsils just tweeted us a, a few turkey movies. Some I agree with. One I, I very vehemently disagree with. Oh, yeah. Uh, I disagree with a couple of those. The, the ones I, I can at least understand, Cannonball Run 1 and 2, which aren't great movies, but I don't think they were really going to make great movies. I think they were just a bunch of stars getting together to have some fun. True. And, and, like, and don't forget, Cannonball, how can you leave out the Cannonball Run 3, which you're going to talk about bad? There's a 3? Is there a 3? I don't well, think well, there is. I thought thinking of Smokey and the Bandit. No, I was thinking of Smokey and the Bandit, because that number 3 was the one where they shot half of it, which Jackie Gleason is yeah. in both roles. Okay, right. Um, And then uh, no. Mary Gordy's Last Dragon, That's which is great an entertainingly bad movie. Oh, my God. I mean, that is such a fantastic no. bad movie. <laughs> First ahead. of all, Kiss My... First of all, the Shogun of Harlem, Bruce Leroy, how can you go <laughs> wrong with that? Kiss my converse. And one of the best... Bruce Leroy might be the greatest 
name in the what, history of it, it could be one of the best lines ever, one of the best FU lines ever, which is when he's got him at the end and he keeps dunking him. By the way, the star of that movie, Tiamat, starts the, the bad guy, Duncan uh, Shogun of Harlem, uh, is Duncan Bruce Leroy in the, in the water saying, who is the master, who is the master? And then he finally pulls him up and his response is, I am. And then he beats, he just kicks his ass. And, yeah. Come on, man. That is a classic, classic moment. Plus, 1980, it's 1985, Apollonia, Singing on the soundtrack, she's best known for being Prince's girlfriend. This is her big post Purple Rain film, and it's The Last Dragon. Yep. How can you go wrong with that? I, uh, I vehemently disagree. I, I strenuously object. And the one that he listed here that I have to strenuously object to is The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, which I think is one of the few perfect movies out there. There is not a false note in that movie. It is. It is quite good. Jeff Goldblum is excellent. Jeff Goldblum's great. Peter Weller's great. The John fact, Lithgow is clearly having a blast. The fact that he that his super advanced vehicle, when you look back on it now, is like a 1982 Ford Ranger pickup <laughs> with a bunch of crap bolted onto it to make it look like it's something more than it is. That alone worth the price of admission. When he drives through the canyon at the beginning and you kind of scratch your head and go, what the hell's going on? He's a neurosurgeon rock star race car driver. What's not to love about He's this movie? He's half Japanese, and those come through. Again, what's not to love about this movie? Nothing. That's and you know what else? He later became RoboCop. Indeed he did. All right. Uh, let's see. What else What else you got on the list? I've got, I mean, I've got some other ones here. We, we want to keep going down the well, the Showgirls? I watched one this weekend that I thought was supposed to... Be, I was looking for movies, particularly for my unfairly roasted movies list. Okay. And one of those was this movie, Knowing, with Nicolas Cage. Oh, God. Which got very bad reviews, except from Roger Ebert, who gave it four stars. And I trust Roger Ebert, so I decided to give this movie a try. To be fair to Ebert, he's been heavily medicated lately. And he would have had to be, because that has to be one of the worst movies I've ever spent two hours of my life on. The first half hour to 45 minutes are actually really good. They're intriguing, they're interesting, and then it takes a total left turn and becomes an incredibly boring, convoluted, depressing mess of a movie. Is this not the film that you encouraged me to watch the trailer for? No. No, okay. Because I don't think I've ever seen the trailer for it. You were you were all over me about some Nicolas Cage movie. Oh, you got no, that's Drive Angry. Drive Angry, okay. Which, if you haven't watched the trailer, go watch the trailer for Drive Angry. Wait, you're excited for that? I'm very excited for that. Uh, I can't say anything. How could you not be? Yeah, I think it's just another another Nick Cage. Let's see what I could do this time. Little... And you say that like it's a bad thing. It's, it's it could be. Let's, let's, it's very well. See what be. I can't do actually. <laughs> it could see what I won't won't make a lot of money on. It, it could be a bad thing. For me, it's The Wicker Man. That was a bad thing. It was, but this is Todd Farmer and Patrick Lussier, both of whom I trust, getting together to make a truly crazy-looking movie with Bill Fickner as the villain. So really, how wrong can you go? All right, three four seven three two six nine seven zero zero. If you want, or if you want to get in on the discussion, or uh, Twitter.com at Frank Unicorn. Uh, okay, so knowing, and then give us give us some give us some more here, or else I'm going to get back into Showgirls. Oh, you let's 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 go straight to Showgirls because you can't have a bad movie list without Showgirls. Showgirls is. Definitely at the top of the list. Okay, I've got one in here. Robot Embassy, uh, Ultimate Turkey, Mommy Dearest, Toxic Avenger. Okay, here's the thing. Toxic Avenger is meant to be a yeah, bad film. Yeah, it's a trauma movie. They it's knew they weren't going to win any Oscars. They knew it. They, when, when the tagline for your film is, Mom, the only superhero from New Jersey. But Mommy Dearest, on the other hand, I think she's got a hell of a point. That That is a movie that's trying so hard to not be campy and awful. And, it and is. boy, does it fit. No more rubber hangers. Wire hangers. Wire hangers. hangers. Or rubber hangers. Wire hangers. You wouldn't want to get hit with a rubber hanger. Ever. Hangers. You would not want to get hit with a rubber hanger. I wouldn't want to get hit with hang, rubber hang, rubber hanger. I wouldn't want to get hit with Faye Dunaway in that makeup either. She was terrifying. I had nightmares about Faye Dunaway when I was a kid. So it was an effect thanks film. to that movie. Not in the way they wanted it to be. Okay. Uh, it was no showgirls. We can all agree on that. But what is? Hardly anything. Yeah, I, Showgirls. I mean, there's just no way. Come on. There, there's no way. That movie was doomed from the start. I'm a big Kyle MacLachlan fan ever since Twin Peaks. And that was the first time I ever saw him in a movie where I wanted to just call his agent and ask him what the hell he's doing. I, I genuinely felt sorry for Kyle McLaughlin being stuck in that movie. I didn't feel and this so was the man who was in the Flintstones. You know what? I didn't feel sorry for Kyle McLaughlin for that movie. You know why? What? Because A, he got paid to be in it. Also, he was in it, so he didn't necessarily <laughs> have to see it. And so you see how that works? I, I sure hope I actually had to pay. I actually paid money to see that film, yeah. and then, because of our experience working at Big Norma's Video, had to explain to 
to all the perverts who came in to rent it <laughs> that no, 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 this isn't the movie that was in the theaters. This is the edited R-rated version where you're not going to get to see Jesse Spano full, you know, frontal and, and grinding on Tom McLaughlin and freaking out in the pool. Go back to watching Save by the Bell. Exactly. <laughs> you're going to have to watch the Save by the Bell episode where she uh, becomes a cheerleader and wears a long skirt. It's the same thing. Yeah. Because it's Big Normous Video and they're, you know, a bunch of tight butts. All right. Uh, but we can all agree, Showgirls, terrible movie. Even even Alan Rations was bad in that movie. And he's never bad in anything. I t- totally forgot that Alan Rations was in that he, movie. He played one of the sleazy producers of the of the show that Nomi Malone forced her way to become Wasn't a Robert Davi one of them, too? Robert Davi was the manager of a strip club. Wow. My recollection of Showgirls is frightening how good it is. It is. Um, really terrifying. All right. But so, Showgirls, uh, Coyote Ugly. I've actually never seen Coyote Ugly, so You're I lucky. can't really comment You're on it. That's why you have eyesight. Because you haven't <laughs> seen it. All right. Uh, shame on you, John Goodman. That's all I can say for that. John Goodman was in that movie? Yes. He played the father in the beginning of the movie. Granted, he was only in it for a brief amount of time and probably didn't read the whole mm-hmm. script because his portion of it was very small. I know but still. My least favorite movie ever made is actually not on this list. Which is? Surprised me. That would be uh, the god-awful abomination known as Pay It Forward. Wow. Oh, God, yeah. Pay It Forward is terrible. But that's your worst movie. That's the worst movie I've ever seen. in the yes. world. Yes. Uh, Worse than Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence. Is it worse than, than, than say, uh, Brent Leonard joint? Give us a Lawnmower Man, perhaps? Well, Lawnmower Man Man was probably the best of the Brent Brent Leonard joints. Um, I would have to say, yeah, it's probably worse than Highlander 5. It's really, (laughs) truly, truly awful movie. Because its intentions were there, but it's just so slimy and ugly a movie. Well, partially the reason it's so slimy and ugly is because Helen Hunt was there. So that, that is... As a rundown, washed up... Milk sugar. Right, which is basically... But she what, wasn't Kiss of Death as well, and it worked, but she only had like five minutes of screen time in right. that movie. Which can actually Kiss of Death quite a good film. Yeah. Uh, that could be a roasted turkey that we put on, because a lot of people don't and, have and it that. Is. It is? Okay. It's on my list. Um, but, you know, the thing is, Helen Hunt now is exactly what she was in Pay Forward. That's who she actually is, <laughs> that character. She's living in that same trailer park and, and or whatever. And, no? Okay. That's a shame. I liked as good as it gets. I, I love me some Helen Hunt, but, I mean, she was the amazing quarterbacking princess, but, you know... <laughs> But no, not not in Pay It Forward. All right, 313 Nick. Uh, Toy Soldiers, terrible movie, yet I have to watch it uh, if I surf to it. You know, uh, is he referring to the Sean Astin? Uh, I actually kind of like Toy Soldiers. I, I thought, thought the Sean Astin like. Toy Soldiers, well, we, that movie was not terrible. It was the, actually the okay. Great, I, I, oh, okay. I love that uh, Andrew Devoff, the guy who went on to play the Wishmaster, was the villain in that movie. I love the fact that you know that Andrew Devoff went on to play the Wishmaster. Sure and was in that Only in the first two, though. Someone else played him in the other two. Oh, man. But um, oh, oh, he, was, oh. he was great as the villain. Oh, deep in your tongue. Oh, no, we, no, 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 no. You've named two of Stallone's finest you know films, what? sir. This, I hate to, to Tango, rag on our fans. Tango and Cash but, and Oscar? Sir, it, I, I, I need some disapproving sound effect. <laughs> I need a disapproving sound effect for him. Sure. No, no, no. We'll bark at you. That was, that was, you. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's movies considered bad that are good. Okay. Then I need a, I need a validating uh, uh, sound effect. Because we were still going with just plain bad movies. And yes, we seeing Tango and Cash on that movie. Yeah. Makes, I, and, and Oscar. Makes my soul cry. Because these are both... We'll, we'll keep these... Oscar's aside actually on my list as one of those underrated movies. We're, yeah, we're going we're gonna to put those aside for a second. These are... These are Unfairly roasted. Okay, we had yeah. a misunderstanding there. The producer didn't write the full note. That's okay. Uh, by the way, you know, we, we can hear you guys on air, by the way. Just so you know, we have a hot mic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not... Okay, all right. Anyway, so there's a lot of distractions going on in the studio. Um, Toy Soldiers. Yeah, no, I, I like that movie. Yeah. I thought that was actually a decent action movie. I like the fact that... You know what I really liked about that movie? There was one great... Was it scene. Andrew Diva? Well, it was, but there, <laughs> but there was a great scene in that movie where... Uh, and, and I thought this was, was good for as realistic as you could be in a film where a private school is overrun by terrorists and the, hey, and the student body works uh, for Tom Cruise and taps. That, well, right, but the troublemaking student body uh, fights back and, and defeats the terrorists when the U.S. government can't. But one of the things I thought was Which is probably the actually there, There's a scene when one of the kids, and I think it's Will Wheaton actually, runs out and he, he kind of has enough and he grabs a machine gun away from one of the bad guys and he goes to shoot it and of course it goes straight up in the air and he can't control it and he gets killed. <laughs> Just like that. Sorry, Will Wheaton. Way to give away who gets killed. Right. And he gets killed almost immediately, and it's like, you know what? Thank you. Because that would actually Thank you, happen. Because that's exactly what would actually happen. If some kid who had never held a weapon grabbed an M6 and was able to actually even squeeze off a round and figure out how to get the gun to fire, couldn't control it, 
them shoot me. What you're really saying is if terrorists actually, you know, make a move on American soil, Will Wheaton will be the first to die. Will Wheaton will be the first to die. He'll be the Christmas addicts of of this invasion. Although we will be saved by the fat hobbit from uh That's true. From the Lord of the Rings. And also Rudy. He also played Rudy, by the way. He did indeed. Which was uh, Vince Vaughn and John Favreau's first movie. That's, a, that's absolutely true. correct. And together, my dad. Yes. Yep. And, and you know what else? Uh, we'll be saved by one of the Goonies. We'll be saved by Mikey from the Goonies. <laughs> so, Sean Aston saves the world. Many times over. He, if Scott Cogram can, can do it. All right. 347-326-9700. Twitter.com, at Frank the Unicorn. We're talking about uh, what we're watching, bad movies. Um... I just have to mention one real quick, and then and then we can get to the bean list. I, I am loath to put a Bond movie on the list. There are several that can make it. Moonraker is particularly bad. Probably the worst Bond But movie. entertaining. But entertaining, and a catchy 70s kind of look at how bad those spaceships are effects kind of way. But hey, uh, Richard Keel's there, so it can't be all bad. That's true. That's true. Richard Keel is back. However, the world is not enough. Which you mentioned is how I killed uh, Desmond Llewellyn with you that did. film. Okay. And it is a pretty lousy movie. They, they, they have a, a great concept for a bad guy and go absolutely nowhere, nowhere with, with it with Robert Carlyle. Because he doesn't end up being the bad guy. He ends yeah. up being the bad guy stooge of the real... Uh, which, you know. which is fine. It's okay for him to be the stooge. But don't give me a bad guy who can feel no pain and then, and then do absolutely nothing with right. it. Oh, he's holding a hot rock. Look yeah. at that. Wow. I want Bond to shoot this guy in the face and for him to kind of fall down, get back up, and go, that didn't hurt, man. Exactly. You know, something crazy that you wouldn't expect. But, but they go nowhere with that. They go nowhere with that, and, but that's not the worst thing. The worst part about it is, this is what I'd say, Denise Richards as nuclear scientist Dr. Christmas Jones. I still remember when we went to see that movie, as soon as she, they said her name was Dr. Christmas Jones, I turned to you and I said, I guarantee you that there will be a line in this movie yeah. about Christmas only coming once a year. And if there isn't, I want my money back. And what's the very last line of the movie? Well, I thought Christmas only came once per year. Exactly. <laughs> Until you get her a dry martini and a bad script. What a lazy movie. Oh, but, but worse, who can believe Denise Richards as a nuclear scientist? Almost as bad as Elizabeth Shue in The Saint, but not quite. It, it was just unbelievable. I, I, as soon as I saw that, you got to be kidding me. Especially because she was coming off wild things. <laughs> that would be like... Okay, in your previous film, you played some, you know... Swamp trash. Swamp, some high school swamp trash slut, right? Uh, although, granted, one of the great films of all time. One of my all-time favorites. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Bill Murray hasn't whited it out of his resume like he has with Garfield. I just, you know, the only thing, I just, Kevin Bacon. What the hell was Kevin Bacon thinking with that movie? What was Kevin Bacon thinking with that movie? He thinks I get to, you know, be around Denise Richards and Ned Campbell for six weeks while we're filming this. I, I know my, my thing was more like what he's thinking like, hey, I want to show Matt Dillon my penis. And the rest of the world my giant bacon penis, too. <laughs> well, exactly. Hashtag bacon penis. He wanted to show off his thick cut peppered bacon. I, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Tyra Cedric is, is crying right now. She's weeping. In pain. In pain. <laughs> much in, very much in pain. All right. Um thing has a spine. But so she was coming off that, and it was just like, that's the character that you've, you've established for yourself, and that's how you've sort of made yourself known, and then your very next role, you're playing a nuclear scientist. Come on, man. Clearly, the good decisions are in her thing. She did marry Charlie Sheen, didn't you? That's true. And then divorce him. So maybe she's learning. Maybe. Got some of his, uh, his, the, the highest paid sitcom actor. So she's getting, she made a smart choice, I think. Get some of that money. It's, it's unbelievable <laughs> for when he was smacking her around. Well, and, and, and doing whatever else he was doing with cheerleader yeah. hookers. Okay. Uh, 347 326 9700. Show at frankunicorn.com, twitter.com, at Unicorn. And uh, let's do some beans list. Let's talk about some, some films that are turkeys that aren't really. And we can start with these two that Deep in Your Tonsils uh, has suggested to us via Twitter Tango and Cash. Which, Which is a favorite. This thing comes up. This movie comes up like every other week. On I show. think I probably quote Tango and Cash every day. <laughs> I don't That's know really that a day sad. goes by <laughs> where a line from Tango and Cash doesn't come out at some point. But let me ask you: Are you saying are you using more Tango lines, more Cash lines, or are you probably more Cash? He was the funny one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I mean, Tango and Cash. I don't think people really consider it a bad movie, right? That's, That's the one I can't believe they never made a sequel to. I it mean, seems like it'd be pre-built for one. Yeah. It's, Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell as, you know, cops who, of course, hate each other and then band together and become buds. And it's 
a blast. But it's funny. There's great action. It's big, you know, silly 80s action in the early 90s. But still. All right. Let's talk Oscar because Oscar, I think, is one, is an extremely underrated comedy. Oscar is an incredibly underrated movie. I don't know why nobody remembers it or like even Stallone bad mouths it, which I don't no. get. It was actually my button. It fell uh, off my sleeve and into the hole, but I got it out. All right, cool. So we, just, sorry, we just had a little side uh, uh, issue, equipment issue. Uh, the band's actually going to be starting, and we're going to in about six or seven minutes. Actually, they're going to they're going to probably fire it up here. So we just had a little equipment issue. Wanted to address it. I didn't mean to interrupt you about Oscar. Go ahead. Okay. Um, but uh, Oscar is just this, a really entertaining. It's a it's a farce. It's like a lend me a tenor kind of thing. It's just you know a lot of slamming doors, a lot of goofy out there performances, but. Stallone's actually pretty darn funny in it. Stallone's really funny um, in it, and he's very likable in it. Peter Riegert is great in it. Chaz Palminteri, Tim Curry, Marissa Tomei, Kurtwood Smith. Cornell Smith. Muni. Will if you love me. If what? you ever love me. William Atherton. Yes, William Atherton is in that film. And all good stuff. And uh, what's his name? Um, is it Vincent Spano as well? Yeah, Vincent right? Spano's in it. Um, just a great film. Joey Travolta's in it. Yes. So I think he has one line. Yeah. But still... Yeah. You can't give Joey Travolta more than one line. <laughs> he can't remember more than one line. <laughs> Probably true. He can remember, I'm Joey, hi, I'm Joey you Travolta, know who, here's my line. But you know who's not in it? Frank Stallone. See, no, that's the problem. You know who else? Stripes Jackson, not in that movie. Would have made it better. Shame. Uh, but it is. It's a, it's, you know what I love about that movie is it's so rapid fire. It's one of those. It's one of the few comedies where it's joke after joke after joke right. after joke and after I, joke. I think nobody expected, you know, a PG-rated, goofy little comedy from Stallone. Real and flash sticky, non very real flash sticky, funny. Very, and it, it's a very funny movie. And, and, it, and, it looks, it. and it looks great, too. I mean, it's a period Harry movie. Shears in it. There's a lot of people that just keep popping up but in that movie. movie. Don Amici. Don Amici. One of Don Amici's last movies. Yeah, I think it actually was his last movie. Was it his last movie? If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, Which I might be. And real, real quick, at Lady Bella 45 mentions Spaceballs and any John Waters movie. We, people, people love Spaceballs, though. Like not it, me. And, 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 but it did well. I mean, it was Spaceballs was a hit. So... I know you don't love it. I'm giving you the blank stare. I don't dig space. Right, is it, it's just name. one Mel Brooks movie, or are you just well? No, I like. I just like that, Mel Brooks. Well, no, I love Mel Brooks. I just there's a couple films that I don't particularly think are his best. Spaceballs being one of them. It may not be his best, but it's, it's pretty funny. I mean, it's we it's talked about consistent. it. We talked about it last week on Spoon yeah. Spaceballs, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, and De- Dracula Dead and Loving It for me represent the bottom end of Mel Brooks. Mm-hmm. Whereas the top end of Mel Brooks represents some of the best comedies of all time, Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, History of the World Part One. All right, uh, at PRD Rich wants to know if Goodman members are single. <laughs> Heard they were, and I quote, stud muffins. Wait, oh, uh, you put the picture on. I put the picture on now because I was asked if you guys are stud muffins, so I. Think okay, so. So would you classify yeah. yourself as any sort of studly bakery item? Uh, Perhaps a studly brownie or, I'm a, or a stud croissant. I'm, I'm, I'm an Otis Bunkmeyer chocolate chip cookie. I'm a Bob, <laughs> I'm a Bob come up here. <laughs> what would you be, Um, I don't know. It's just that's just too weird to answer. Yeah. Actually, you're one of those. You're one of those. Uh, you're a two J's rainbow cookie. Okay. <laughs> you guys in that How about a black and white cookie? Okay. He's a regular. <laughs> Shop the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, then hopefully PRD Verace is going to be excited about the upcoming uh, music and also will check out the YouTube video we're going to post, too. Um, we should probably get uh, out. These two, these two boys, uh, they're, they're, they're single. Joshua and Jamie. Ooh, are yeah. we the, is that, does that mean that there's a possible love connection with PRD Verace? Yeah, no. well, no, I, I was going to say you've got a <laughs> member of the band that's not uh, available, ladies. I'm sorry. Uh, Apparently, I don't know. No, well... Apparently, neither does he. I'm currently, um... It's complicated. It's, it's just me and the mom. He's asexual. All right. <laughs> He's holding out for Denise Richards, guys. Of course. Is that can what it can is? you blame him? Well, I was hoping... Uh, Christmas I, only comes once a year. That's true. Well, not no, not now. <laughs> well, I was waiting for Natalie. Portman? Natalie Portman? Natalie Portman? Sure. And so, which is like I have to throw out there. If anyone hasn't watched the, uh, the, the trailer for Your Highness yeah, yet... With it, the, the thong scene. I don't know if it's possible to have a new favorite movie after only seeing the trailer, but if it is, I got a bad case of that. <laughs> that that trailer was absolutely hysterical. I can't wait for that though. It's already been screened. Has it? Yeah. I, the movie I, is finished. I very much want to see that movie. How have we not gotten preview tickets to that? I don't know, but that movie looks terrific. Because uh, we only get all the only in in L.A. It was a short uh, screening. 
uh, very few people, not even critics, it was just a fan. It wasn't even fully edited. Oh, wow. All right. There's a... So there's... Whatever graphics are in the movie, it wasn't really a still... There, there's a, a, red, a Red Band R-rated trailer out there for Your Highness on IGN.com. It's very, very funny. You should totally check that out. Danny McBride, James Franco, Natalie Portman. I've met Danny stuff. McBride speaking in a, in a British accent. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Same with James Franco. He has to hold it up fine. even through the trailer. I mean, Natalie Portman does fine. But you don't really hear Zoe Deschanel. It, it looks yeah. very, very funny. But so that, you, you do, you Justin Theroux in it, who wrote uh, the Iron Man movies. Yeah, you do see uh, Natalie Portman undressed into a thong. Indeed you do. You see a nice... Good night, everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do this. We're going we're gonna to take a little break here, and we're going to do our local music segment. We're going to get the band going here. Uh, we're going to get these guys set up. Well, uh, all right. So we, we're going we're gonna to get set up here, and uh, and it's going to be the band Goodman. They're actually setting up for us in studio. You guys... Want to give us an idea of what you guys are going to play for us first? Uh, pop it? funk. Some, some, it, 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 it's definitely a groove. It's sexalicious. Groove yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't All like right. to use the word sexalicious because the children out there. Uh, we're, want to grow. We're, we're an adult. Yeah. You, can, you can be sexalicious if you want to. A sexalicious totally muscle. Cool that. You can have that. All right, this is. <laughs>
that was great. That's exactly
Kung Fu Mountain. Because he's Teddy Ruxman, he's a bear. So he's just I got know what he, he, is. Can't really, he doesn't have thumbs to grab at things. So he's going to grip something. If a bear's going to grip something, it's with his teeth. What are you planning to put in Teddy Ruxpin's innocent little mouth? Well, I, I think it depends on the tape you put in Teddy Ruxpin. If you can still find a cassette tape to play in Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> I was going to say, Teddy Maybe Ruxpin would have to be an MP3 player, player now. You could put him on top of the tree. You, there you go. You've rendered answer. the question useless. Thank you, Beans. All right. That's what I'm here for. This is how this usually works. I, I ask the question, you just, you just destroy it. All right. Uh, more likely cause of Thanksgiving Day disaster... Forgetting to totally thaw the turkey before you deep fry it, resulting in the fiery destruction of your home, or deadly combination of red wine, turkey, and bourbon gravy results in the revelation of shocking family secret that puts elderly relatives in an ambulance. I love the shocking family secret, so I got to go with B. Yeah, I think I, I would go. The whole with B, point of Thanksgiving is for those secrets to come out. But I, I wrote this specifically to mention to people that if you're going to deep fry turkey, this is our public service announcement for the week. <laughs> make sure make you sure, thaw it. Make sure you thaw it. Because what happens when you, you know, it's the same thing while you don't throw water on an oil fire, is the same thing that happens when you deep fry a turkey. If it's frozen, the water melts, or the, the ice that, that is freezing the turkey melts, the, the water seeps out, it gets mixed with the oil. What happens is... It spatters and you die. Well, because oil and water don't mix, okay? Because they oil, don't? No, because oil is lighter than water. So what happens is, when, this, is why, this is why you don't throw Does water Does BP know that? I'm going, this is the scientific <laughs> portion of the show. Here's, here's the thing. Oil floats, right? It floats above the water. So what happens is when it heats up, it forces the water underneath it as it's heating, and it superheats the water underneath it. The water has nowhere to go because it can't expand. Okay? It can't really turn to steam with all the oil weighing down on top of it, even though the oil is lighter than it. So as it turns to steam, when it reaches a critical mass, it explodes and it sends fiery oil everywhere. That's why you never put oil on a grease fire, and that's why when you drop a deep-fried turkey in a fryer, if it's frozen, in about 15 seconds, it's going to turn into a giant flaming fireball. So, I actually saw it on an episode of MacGyver. <laughs> Did he actually use a flaming... No, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> they didn't make both Because it, it could have happened. MacGyver could have used a flaming turkey to cause an explosion. And, and, and there's your MacGyver reunion movie right there. Perfect. But I think MacGruber did something like that. So when any given cast member of Jersey Shore decides to take a shower, does the water just beat up on them and yes, roll away? absolutely. Just checking. Come on, you're assuming the cast of Jersey Shore showers? Good point. Give me a break. They're all orange. Have you seen that? All right. Um, I can't wait to wear those, those expensive pants. There you yeah. go. You know how much spray? You know how much that, that orange paint costs? I can imagine. You know? That, why, why do you think all those road cones are out there unpainted? Because they're spraying that fat shit from the Jersey Shore. All right. Uh... Giant Thanksgiving Day balloon they need to... How unicorn are you? Giant Thanksgiving Day balloon they need to bring back Woody the Woodpecker or Fred Flintstone smoking a Winston cigarette. Did they take away Woody the Woodpecker? I have not seen Woody the Woodpecker in a while. I just want to saw him. Woody, Woody, I, Woody Woodpecker? I felt he was too mischievous. Has he been in the, in the parades? I haven't I, noticed. I, I, I can't say that he hasn't. I haven't really watched the parade, but... Uh, Woody Woodpecker is oddly enough the first balloon I think of when I think of the Macy's Me too. Day Parade. So Me too. I got it. Maybe he's still there. Maybe that's why I put him on the list. Could be. I have no idea that he's not there, so I don't know if I can. Okay, fine. We can change it to Alcoholic Smurf or Fred Flintstone or Baker Smurf. Smurf. Or Baker Smurf. <laughs> Smurf's movie coming out. I know. Very I'm relevant. Well aware. B.J. Novak is Baker Smurf. Uh, all right. Now, here's where th these are the ones you hate, where I get the, the plots. My God, that's long. Better new ending for the Peanuts Thanksgiving Day special. Now, I have to ask this because it always bothered me, the Thanksgiving Day special, how ungrateful those kids were to Charlie Brown. So, here we go. Better ending for the Peanuts Thanksgiving Day special. Charlie Brown has enough and reminds all the other selfish jackass Peanuts gang that he's 10 years old and just made them an entire meal on a moment's notice on Thanksgiving when you know his parents had to also be cooking in the kitchen. Yeah. Sure, it was popcorn and toast, but did you bring anything peppermint patty? No? Hmm. Too busy looking at Dad's sock to get a peek at one of the Playboys for a confusing thrill that you only normally get when you change with Marcy after gym class. How about Marcy? Did you bring anything? No. Didn't think so. Too busy taking orders from peppermint patty and practicing for the field hockey team. Or, hey, Pigpen, how, uh, how about that you smell like a dirty French gym sock and have more filth on you than Mickey Rourke? I don't think that's possible. Here's some free advice for you. Save the nickel you would have given that bitch Lucy to use on some deodorant. Okay? You smell like a corpse's taint. These are all things Charlie Brown would say. Really? Because you just yeah, didn't get uh, or, or Charlie Brown accepts the abuse in stride, and after everyone's enjoyed their meal, sits back and laughs heartily as everyone dies from the poisoned food. But he ate it, too. Oh, but in this one, he wouldn't. Ah. It's an alternate ending. So you're saying he's gonna, even going to kill Snoopy? Possibly. I, I hate you, sir. 
Well, you don't hate me. I'm you just had my Thanksgiving. So then, you, that so, in my you, head. so then you prefer the one where he doesn't kill everyone. He just verbally abuses them. Yes, I like the idea of Charlie Brown just snapping and going like um, Edward Norton in that scene in 25th Hour and just like going nuts on everybody, just freaking out. Absolutely. Okay. I, I personally, I you know, I would like to see that because I, again, I feel like they're just so ungrateful with Charlie Brown. Kids 10 years old, they show up at his house, make us dinner, he makes them a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, it's not good enough. Come on. Maybe if what does that teach us about being thankful? Maybe. They should just be thankful he made them food. Maybe they if he had a better thankful. Christmas tree. They, they should just be thankful. See, but they wouldn't. That was That's before. They but that, right, and that was before the Christmas tree. That was the I don't, comes before Christmas. I don't even know how he had candy to give them, because all he got for Halloween was rocks. Was rocks, right. Okay, uh, let's do this. Let's keep it rolling, because obviously the Peanuts one wasn't as popular. That's all I would be. That's all right. Um, oh, wait a minute. At Sarah Lively, Charlie Brown should have poisoned those bitches years ago. Thank you. Especially Lucy. Justification for pulling that football away. Every single time. That leads to spousal abuse. You know that. If they ever got married, then he would. I have a picture somewhere on my phone of Charlie Brown actually punching Lucy in the face. That's great. It, it needed to happen. It did once. Just once. All right. He has a great look of regret on his face while he's punching her. I'll have to take it up. Speaking of punching, fact. On Thanksgiving Day, Stephen Seagal does not give thanks. Rather, he accepts thanks from the people he has yet to kill. Nice. Does he do it in his Colombian accent from Machete? Possibly. Uh, sure. Here we go with a serious one now. This, this is actually a serious, serious, serious one. Yes. Better underappreciated share performance, Mrs. Flax, the mom from Mermaids, or Florence Rusty Tullis, the mom in Mask? I think people really dug her in Mask, so I'm going to have to go with Mermaids because that's a much more underrated movie. You think so? I do. My issue with Mask, she did get nominated for a Golden Globe for that movie. That was right. People dug her in that movie. Just for people that aren't aware of it, uh, for our listeners, Mask, I'm referring to the 1985 movie Mask with Eric Stoltz and Cher, not, and, and uh, yeah, not Mask with Jim Carrey. And it's about the sort of true story. Rocky Dennis, he's very disfigured. So if Eric Stoltz had gotten one of those masks that made him, like, turn into a cartoon character, that would have been a much better movie. You think so? I watched that twice. Uh, i got to tell you, I thought Mask was a great film. And it I is. thought Cher really should have gotten Academy Award consideration for that. Didn't she? She did not. She did not get nominated for an Oscar. It won for, that's great, it won for Best Makeup. <laughs> Uh, and she Fine. got nominated for the Golden Globe, and but she did not win, and she did not get nominated for the Oscar, which I think she possibly won for Moonstruck, also based on the strength of her performance in Mask, because that does happen sometimes in, in sure you know where you, you were really better in this movie, but we're not going to give you the Oscar for it, so but we recognize it, so we're kind of going to give it to you later when we can, a la Jeff Bridges. Not winning for the dude, although he should have. He should have. But then they realized that, and then crazy hard they just gave him the Oscar. I think the same thing for Moonstruck, although, again, great movie, shares great, and Nicolas Cage with one hand, how could you not Can I be that? honest with you? I think Moonstruck is one of the most overrated movies of all time. Really? Can't stand it. Wow. I, uh, I disagree. It I, I enjoy Moonstruck a lot, although I do think I do think Cher's performance in Mask is her best performance that she's ever given in a film. And maybe she was damn good in Silkwood. She was damn good in Silkwood, but Mask was just... So, no, I, I think she was amazing and stuck on you. <laughs> <laughs> See, we've got the band supplying humor now. Nice. That's fantastic. All right. Um, most disgusting thing in the ocean, Sharkdo Poop or Amy Winehouse on vacation? Winehouse. Not even a question. You think so? I don't want to see one of her teeth float up. Yeah. <laughs> Amy Winehouse is so disgusting, Sharktopus wouldn't even eat her. No, he wouldn't. would just swim right by. I'm not touching that. He would end up with Sharkto genital work. <laughs> He'd end up with something much worse. Sharkto gonorrhea, yeah. Sharkto herpes, uh, Sharkto AIDS. Sharkto they just came up with their sequel, Sharkto herpes. We, we, just, we just threw out a whole bunch of hashtags that you could use on that one. That, that's how they're, you know what? It, it's in, in fact, that's how they defeated uh, Manda Shark and Giant Octopus. Lorenzo yeah. Lamas, the hero of that film, gave them both the STDs. Nice. Yeah. The itching and the burning was too much for them. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Black Friday should be renamed uh, Green Friday or Spend Day or Debt Day. Well, that's sort of depressing. Kind of sucks the holiday spirit right out of it. Well, a debt I, day. A new D day. <laughs> I just, I don't understand the term Black Friday, you know. It just doesn't sound, you know, every other, Black Tuesday, not good. Black Monday, these are all stock market crashes. Yet Black Friday, giant sale. Well, because it makes all, all the stores go into the black. Yeah, your logic. Black your yeah, logic, logic indeed. All right. After you, Bunny, thank, uh, thanks, Goodman, sh- uh, should be the world of beer band. 
be the what? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. We still have to work out the details with World of Beer. We're working on, you know, we want to possibly do a remote uh, broadcast. We're talking to World of Beer and Coconut Free uh, about possibly doing that, and they've been very gracious to us. And one of the things we were looking at was possibly having a band there uh, when we do that. And certainly, I would, I would ask you guys about that, although Be A Bunny jumped the gun a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, it's good, to, it's good to, to show the fan support and the interest, and we like that. So um, we'll see you, Be A Bunny. We'll work on it. How about that? we got to work on World of Beer for that one. That's up to them. And it's up to Goodman if they're going to be able to be available. You know. Can I just say uh, I miss our producer? She's way too far she away. She is way too far away. She's not really our beautiful producer. She's giving us the wave, but... Uh, all right. She gave us a royal wave, which I like. Well, which is turning the head from side th- to side. There's a reason for that too, and 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 the Frank Unicorn Radio Program has some. We'll have some exciting news next month about some royal stuff. Are you gonna have a royal engagement? No, possibly. We'll see. Another just, one for just, me to not care hold, about. Hold on, hold on. We'll see. All right. We'll see. Let's just leave it at that. A little, we'll build a little hype on that one. We'll let people stew on that one for a little bit. Are you gonna come out as a queen? No, absolutely Same. not. Although there there will be a, a maximum royal connection is the most I can tell you. All right. Um, more looking forward to Green Lantern or Green Hornet? Green Lantern, not even a question. Really? Seth Rogen is a superhero. No thanks, I'm well, good. Um, I, I have nothing against Seth Rogen, but eh. the, the trailer leaves me completely cold. But Green Lantern should be a blast. I kind of disagree, only because I'm a little afraid of having to watch Ryan Reynolds in that suit for two hours. I'm going to get eye cancer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like I'm just looking at that going, the computer. now I understand why women don't read the sports uh, illustrated I can't. swimsuit issue. I and now I know why my wife throws away Victoria's Secret catalogs, although she could be in one. But I'm just such but a DC whore that I'm all for a Green Lantern movie. So I like it. The I can't, I can't handle the suit, I don't think. No, like, yeah, I, I just when too, I, you know. When I, when I first read about it, I was like, what? Like, I didn't understand at first. And I was like, all right, I guess it's going to work. Then I see it, and I'm just like, I don't know. He, he looks like a, a cartoon body with just a real head on top. Yeah, he does a little he bit. And, and, and here's the, the thing: the CGI with, suit is an odd choice. Well, but. And, and here's the thing: I don't know if the cod piece there is CGI or not, but damn, that's not necessary. Can't uh, say I noticed, but I'm glad you picked it out. Well, here's the thing: because for less, when this is the, 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 the funny part, uh, when we went to see the movie for less this past week, the only trailer they showed before the movie, which they showed three times, was the Green Lantern three trailer. Times. They showed it once, everyone got excited, they did a couple announcements, then they ran the film, and it played two consecutive times prior to the movie. So I got to see Ryan Reynolds, you know, on the huge, giant Cinema Palace screen. I haven't seen it on the big the, screen yet. Yeah, it's, it. it's a little disturbing. I've only seen uh, it on, the, on my computer. Plus, plus, the other part of it is that, to me, he's always Dr. Michael Bergen. <laughs> so he's flying around as a Green Lantern, and all I can think is, look at that, Bergen is saving the world. That's great. Where, where is Richard Ricolo? Nowhere. He's gone. He's hanging out with Steve Gutenberg. He's he's swimming in the ocean avoiding Shark the Puss and Amy Winehouse. I'm fine. I'm, I'm looking very forward to the Green Lantern movie. I'm excited. I'm looking I like the cosmic be... scale of it. I like uh, if, if that only, it's got a sense of humor. If only because, well, it definitely will have a sense of humor with Ryan Reynolds. But um, one of the things for me is that whenever we do surveys, you know, you do the informal surveys, what superhero would, would you be? Everyone always says that I would be Green Lantern. Twitter agrees with me. Four for Green Lantern, Four for Green three, Lantern three for Hornet. All right. I mean, I'm not against Green Hornet. I'm, I'm sure it'll be entertaining, but the trailer leaves it completely cold. You I know, feel like I've seen the movie already. You know what would be even better for Green Hornet, though? Is if they totally threw a curveball at you, and it turns out that Green Hornet was a type of marijuana that Seth Rogen had gotten involved with, and it was a sequel to Pineapple Express, <laughs> under the guise of hey, being a superhero movie. Throw, throw James Franco back in there, and you got me. There you go. That, you just, you make and another Huey Lewis just, theme song. See, we just made the movie better. There you go. Yeah, and, you, and that could have been on the, that could have been on how Uniform Army. We could have done could that on the plot. All right, I totally ruined that. Okay. Um, better use of high heeled shoe. Make your legs look longer, or kill Steven Weber with a stiletto to the eyeball. Much as I love Steven Weber, I did love Single White Female, and I, and I got to give it to that. That's a it, great moment. It is a great death moment. It really is. Big and Steven Weber fan, but wow, that's a great moment. He deserves it, because later on, four years after that movie, he made Dracula Death Loving. So she was preemptively I guess that's the, true. the stiletto in the eyeball there. See, the problem is now, I would think high heel shoes for, for most women, so expensive, you don't want to get all the gore of an eyeball on them, on the heel. Right? Is that the sound of someone getting thwacked in the face? It, it could be. Uh, it makes shoe. it very hard to walk <laughs> if you've got juicy, juicy eyeball at the bottom of your stomach. Juicy, heel. juicy eyeball. Hashtag juicy, juicy eyeball. Isn't right. that a Rihanna song? It, I believe it could be. Uh, better holiday flavor, gingerbread or eggnog? Eggnog, no contest. 
I don't like gingerbread. I agree. Eggnog is the best. They should make bacon eggnog. That's what we need. No, no, they shouldn't. Uh, actor I would like to see portray Santa Claus in Big Screen <coughs> Dramatic Biopic Pick. Alec Baldwin, Christopher Walken, Kevin Spacey, or Dolph Lundgren. You wouldn't go straight for uh, Wilfred Brimley? No. Two obvious. Two obvious. I even left Seagal off the list because he wouldn't have to wear a fat suit. <laughs> also, we'd never be yeah, able neither, to explain Santa's hairline. Neither would Alec Baldwin. But um, I'd probably have to go with Lundgren just because I'd like to see him working. Always happy to see Dolph with the job. I would also say Wonder as well. And I like the idea of a Teutonic Santa, which would also be a great name for a band, Teutonic Alec Santa. Baldwin. Alec Baldwin is Santa. I could, I see Alec Baldwin, I think, would be a very commanding Santa. That'd be a good... That'd Until he starts yelling at one of the kids and leaving a terrible message on their answering machine. You didn't get any presents because you're a little pig. You know that? <laughs> That's why you don't get any presents, because you're on the naughty list. Something like that? Something like that. Is that how it goes? Uh, you should read that, right? Read that. <laughs> and if Kevin Spacey's in it, it'll end up terrible. So. Well, yeah, it will, especially if Kevin Hunt's in there. All right. Um, okay, so let's get that. Oh, real quick, if I were ever in jail, this is just an escape strategy for anyone ever in prison in jail. If I were ever in jail, I would escape in the middle of the night by yelling, Kool Aid! Because the Kool Aid guy would come bursting through the wall. That's right, and then off I run. And think about it. You're a corrections guard. You get to a cell, you see a big giant picture of friggin' Kool-Aid in a broken wall. Yeah, where, else you gonna, you, where else do you see that besides family guy, the Kool-Aid guy? Never. Okay. But are you going to be looking for me? Or are you going to be questioning what the hell is this giant picture of talking Kool-Aid doing in the cell? Depends if he had TV in the 70s. Good God. I would assume most corrections officers would. All right. Uh, Thomas just wants to know if Bean would make a good Sinestro. Would Beans make a good Sinestro? I think he'd make an excellent Sinestro. I would need to grow the mustache for it, but I'm all Clear, Clearly you could. I am jealous of your facial hair. <laughs> I don't have any right it's, now. It's much, but, but, the potential, potential the but the potential is so much better than mine. Yeah, I, all right. Um, yeah, Who's, think about it, man. I forgot. Who's playing Sinestro on the Green Lantern movie? I, I don't know. But Kool-Aid Man breaks into your jail cell. You run out. The, the guards come in and say, did he escape? Kool-Aid Man responds, oh, yeah. Come on. That's... Do you want to say it again? Because I know you were just oh, waiting. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, worst idea for Christmas special. Here's where we're bringing Stripes Jackson. Oh, Christ. A Stripes Jackson Christmas with special guest Santa Sharkopus. That's right. Or uh, a Busey family Christmas featuring Father Gary and son Jake in their holiday sweaters, giving advice on the history of the holiday and inside tips and secrets on how to celebrate Busey style. <laughs> Typically would involve cocaine hookers, motorcycles, tooth polish, chewing tobacco, only well, executed film strips in a fight with Santa. That's also not a contest because not only would I watch the Gary and Jake Busey Christmas special, <laughs> I would TiVo it and I would watch it every <laughs> single day. I think it that, would become that wouldn't be a Christmas special. That would be a religion. I think that would become the equivalent. Uh, that would become the equivalent Christmas special of the, of the Star Wars Christmas special. No, it would be the equal. It, no, because... Have you seen the Star Wars Christmas special? Right, and the problem with the Star Wars Christmas special is once you see it once, you've seen it, you don't ever want to see it again. That's true. That I want to see every day, right now. I will say this. I, I, have you guys ever seen the Star Wars Christmas special? Unfortunately. You, you see? Okay. It's, it's, you want to see it's, it? It's fantastic. I encourage you guys right. highly to see it. I don't. It's wonderful. It's not. Uh, the bootleg copy, when I saw I saw it on a bootleg copy. And when I the, the bootleg Star copy Wars I saw, and B. Arthur are two great tastes that do not taste even remotely good together. No. But here's but here's the thing. The hitch value of it, it's worth it. And for the fact that every copy is a bootleg copy recorded on an early VHS or Betamax tape that's been converted, right? Mm -hmm. That's because no master print exists. Spielberg had them destroyed. Or Lucas had them destroyed. He didn't want them around, he got rid of them, destroyed them. Oh, so so well so when I read when I saw it, I rented it at a, a little independent uh, video store in Orlando called the Stardust, which I don't know if it's still there or not, but that robot embassy could probably tell us. And the copy that they happen to have was recorded at the Columbia Cinema 3, which happens to be the cinema that I went to my entire life from the time I was born to about 11, 12 years old when I moved down to Florida, when I lived in Maryland. That's where we went to see every movie, the Columbia Cinema 3. And that's where this particular – it was taped from a local Columbia broadcast, and there were advertisements for the local Columbia Cinema 3 and all the places I used to go as a little, little kid growing up. Which is great for you, but it in no way makes that special watchable. Yes, it does. Absolutely, because the 70s era commercials where you can buy a Chevrolet Chevette brand new for $795, that's right, that makes it, it work. Still can. When, you, when, when you're seeing value meal food advertised for $25, 
29 cents, that's where you say, I have to watch this. And, yes, B. Arthur. Come on, B. Arthur. Dorothy Spornak in a star. Little baby Wookiees. How could you not love the baby Wookiees? How could you? The, the best. The fact that the baby Wookiee in Star Wars, in space, with space cruisers and all that technology, his gift for Christmas is a 1970s Radio Shack make-your-own radio kit. Come on, that's fantastic. All right, so I think the Star Wars Christmas special is great. You know what? Last know. question. More unlikely, uh, Elf Dentist or Talking Snowman? I don't think either of those are unlikely. I don't think they're unlikely either because we've seen other... Especially if you watch the Beauty Christmas special. That, that's true. Uh, okay. So here we go. We're gonna, is we're it gonna, bacon time? It is bacon I time. I want bacon. Everybody wants bacon time. Okay. So the first thing, this week in bacon, uh, let's tweet out that we're doing our bacon recipe. So uh, we developed a new thing here. We, we, we had a previous recipe that we gave out, the unicorn horns, which is the crescent rolls stuffed with cream cheese wrapped in maple-soaked bacon, sprinkled with brown sugar, and baked in the oven until delicious and dead. Do you have more of those? I, I, I'm sorry I don't. Uh, I've been doing this show for how long have we been doing this show? Like four months. Four months. Still hasn't given me a friggin' one of those. Because every time I make not them, one. It's just not I eat them all. Delicious. Every time I make them, eat them all. Now this one, that's more of a dessert bacon item. This would be more of your bacon appetizer. More of a dessert bacon item. More of a dessert bacon item. This is more of a dessert bacon appetizer. A dessert, a, a bacon appetizer. A bacon, a, bacon appetite, if you will. Yes. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to make bacon wrapped mozzarella sticks. So here's how you make your own mozzarella sticks. First, you go out, you buy your string cheese. Your and your defibrillator. Don't forget string, your defibrillator. Your, and your, and your uh, yes, your defibrillator, and you dial 91 on the phone. Yes. Just keep it. Okay. So Keep your finger hovering over the other one. Correct. You, you buy string cheese, okay, real simple. You dip it in milk, you roll it in breadcrumbs. You deep fry that, you've got a mozzarella stick. That's how they do it. Now, here's where the additional step comes in. Before you deep fry it, wrap that sucker in bacon, then deep fry it. Deep fry until it is golden delicious. The bacon will be crispy. The mozzarella sticks will be golden brown. It's fantastic. You must let this cool. Uh, you will be very tempted to put it in your mouth immediately from pulling it from the fryer. Do not do this. Your face will burn off. The cheese will melt you. You do not. You do not look like that guy from Popcorn. From or I was thinking actually right as the long start. It's like, like looking at like the arcade. Right. Just, ah, you'll melt. <laughs> don't want that to happen. You don't want to become a mozzarella mess. Just but it's delicious. Uh, and uh, quicker for quicker death we say chase that with eggnog. Actually. Wow. So. Don't waste the light. They'll be dead right. before the eggnog uh, cup is empty. It's possible. Before you your Marty right. Moots mug. But before, you, but before you die from consuming this, take a picture of it, send it to us, and, and tell us your experiences with it. Now, I'll make some of these during the week. Don't tell us all your experiences into that, with it. In, into some that, of those we might not want to know. Well, no. uh, I'll make, I'm going to make this during the week. I'm sorry. You may not be here for that. How come you never make these things when I'm here? I'll tell you what. Next week – well, next week I can't because we'll be broadcasting from your place – can't cook bacon in a kosher house. That's true. <laughs> the week after that, we will we will do a, a actual cooking on air cooking demonstration where we sample and taste this week in bacon recipes on the air. How about that? Cream fresh. Okay. All right. Right. Um and then also the, the greatest product ever invented in regards to the bacon is called the bacon wave. Now this is just my opinion that the bacon wave is the greatest product ever. But essentially what the bacon wave is, it allows you to cook bacon in the microwave oven. And it actually works really, really well. It's essentially just a plastic cone-looking thing it, it, that you line bacon uh, strips up in. Is it any better for you than getting, like, that ready-made bacon that you can get and, like, throw in the microwave for 30 e seconds? Easy baked bacon. Well, this is it's much better because it's actually, you can cook actual bacon, but it drains off all the fat and everything. And here's the best part. It was invented by a 12-year-old girl who made millions off it. Her family is so wealthy from the bacon wing. I would think Because that. she invented a superior product. And bear in mind, this was back in the in the mid nineties, early nineties. Twelve year old girl invent anything before bacon was the phenomenon that bacon is. Bacon. I mean, it was still phenomenal, but it hadn't reached its level. There of is a time where bacon wasn't a phenomenon. Well, it was phenomenal, but it wasn't a phenomenon because it, the internet wasn't really as widespread. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. Oh, boy. sorry. All right, so the bacon. I way. can you never can hear buy, that song can, and not do that. You can buy it on Amazon. I hear that word. Before the twelve year old girl that invented it, uh, and that's always always a good thing. Um, three four seven three two six nine seven zero zero. Can I just mention that Academy Award winner Sandra Bullock sang that song on Muppets today? Yes, you can. It was good, good stuff. It was good stuff. That you know, show did not last long enough. No, it did not. Uh, you know what else is good stuff? Cosmo. Cosmo. 
Julia Stiles on the cover. Let's get to Cosmo. Let's let's just flip right to our first uh, little segment here. Sexy versus skanky. We love this one. Are those mutually exclusive? Yes. Uh, so here, here's what's sexy. Tennis hotties getting changed. Sexy. They're showing they're showing uh, essentially guys with their shirts off. Raphael Nadal, and then right across from John Gosselin. Really? I mean, is that any? World-class athlete, jackass reality star. There's no competition for who takes their shirt off there, right? I mean, that's... I right? wouldn't say that it would be. That's, that's just stupid. Okay. Uh, sexy, tights that show your legs. Skanky, tights that show off your crotch. Yeah, unless you're in a porno movie or a hip-hop video, you shouldn't be wearing anything that shows... You know, or in a perfect world, both. No. I'm just letting the silence go. As you should. All right. Uh, <laughs> sexy versus skanky. Sexy, cute twit pics. Skanky nude twit pics. Well, here's the thing, Cosmo. A nude twit pic could be cute. Right? It could be. I didn't even know people were tweeting nude pictures. I, I didn't either. I'm not following the right people. I guess we're not on Twitter. Keeping your tonsils never tweets a nude picture. Please don't. <laughs> uh, okay. Although, if anyone else wants to tweet us a nude picture, I mean, please don't as well. Because we don't we don't want to see that. Don't we? No. There's a, isn't there enough porno on the internet for you that you don't have to have people send I don't know that there is. I, I prefer it for people oh, I know. Oh, God. All right. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, here's one. Sexy, Frank the Unicorn, Skanky Beans. No, okay. Uh, that, that was inappropriate. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, sexy, girl power, skanky, girl bashing. Well, duh. Girl bashing is always a bad idea. Didn't That's even know stupid. it was a thing. I, I, I guess it's a thing. I don't get it. I, is there people that do that? That's just stupid. All right. Um, <laughs> sexy, copy to your mistakes. Skanky, lying for the cops about your mistakes. Also illegal to lie to police. Called giving a false report can put you in jail. Doing illegal things is not a, necessarily non-sexy. True, but lying for the cops, I just, I don't know. This one I totally disagree with. Sexy NFL players, skanky LFL players? Oh, no. No, no, no. That's the lingerie football league. And let me tell you, that's what I want to see when I'm playing football. Or if I'm watching football. That's my <laughs> That's what you want to see when you're playing football. Well, that's a problem. I think women I think women playing football in lingerie is much more entertaining than watching stupid Brett Favre run around and, and gimp it out, right? Stupid Brett Favre, though. I'm stupid pretty sure he Brett tweeted Favre. some naked pictures, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he did, as a matter of fact, which is what would qualify him as being stupid <laughs> Brett Favre. <laughs> All right. They've got a whole bunch of stuff in here about 101 things about men. Okay? I don't think there are 101 things about men. Not, not that they're worth knowing, I don't think. Right, yeah, men are pretty pretty easy, right? Uh, but you can use us straight out of the box, basically. Now, now here's something that's a surprise and is also a complete lie. Uh, they've got a, a poll here: undies that drive him wild, right? Uh, okay, so they've got high waisted briefs, four percent. Let, let's do this. Let's. I'm going to throw out. There, there's four types here, and and our producers, if you guys, which are ladies, if you want to get in on this, you can answer this too. Quick poll. We've got high-waisted briefs, boy shorts, bikini cut, or thong. Which of these, as a man, would you consider to be the most sexy? Beans? Bikini cut. Bikini cut. I want the thong. You want the thong? Oh, man. Sorry, I was spacing out. Oh, all right. High-waisted high briefs, boy shorts, bikini cut, or thong. And the way you play it, you can space out all you want, man. It's cool. <laughs> Which of those are, are going to be the best panties? What, what of those do you want to see when you unwrap that gift? Bikini cut. Bikini cut, all right. Boy shorts. Boy shorts. Wow, I have to go with thongs. Boy shorts. Boy shorts. I got to go with thongs, too. Thongs just look uncomfortable. They look <laughs> fun. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I don't even know. Okay, all right. 4% high-waisted briefs, 30% boy shorts, 37% bikini cut. Bikini cut was actually number one. Thong was number two. Or, sorry, thong was number three, 29%. Wow. Interesting. I'm okay with that. It really depends on who's wearing this as well. Right? Because, for example, Natalie Portman in a thong, I think we're all 100%. Of course. Right? Yes. Jessica Tandy in a thong, I think we're all totally against. Well, Jessica Tandy now or in like, you know, 10, 15 years ago? Jessica Tandy ever. <laughs> all right, fine. Betty White in a thong. I know where you're going. Jessica Tandy is a Rosie O'Donnell. No. Rosie O'Donnell. Ugh. Exit the evening. Oh, you said I've actually seen that, that, unfortunately. Oh, terrible. Okay. Uh,. Wow. Okay, so how to meet a man. Now, ladies, no, you shouldn't have to figure out how to meet a man. It should be easy enough to meet a guy. Go somewhere where there are guys. Stand around. You'll meet one. <laughs> right? I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. Uh, but here we go. These are some tips. In the supermarket, find some weirdly named product 
uh, on a nearby shelf and ask him how to pronounce it. He'll love being able to help. If you have no clue, you can laugh about it. Either way, the ice is broken. It's pronounced tide. Really? That's supposed to work? He, I, I, I get where they're going with this, but at the same Come time... Come on, man. You can't here's, read? Here's, right, exactly. Here's I think thing. it's Listerine. Women, don't make yourself stupid to attract a man. Ever. Don't dumb yourself down. That never works. That's a bad idea. Unless That's you're just trying to be on our the level. Is, right. They can. They have all the power. They can. They can. They can. But they, they now, nowadays, they, we won't even know we're pronouncing it wrong. Nowadays, that's they, true. <laughs> they can just go on Facebook, message somebody, just be like, "You're adorable." The guy will take it from there. I agree. And you don't have to dumb yourself down to get a guy. And if you have to dumb yourself down to attract a guy, wrong guy for you, because you're compromising yourself. So bad advice from Cosmo. There's a lot bad of bad Cosmo. Bad. bad Cosmo. There's a lot of bad advice from Cosmo. Okay. Uh, just a man. <laughs> dumb girls make themselves smarter. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the easiest way to do that, wear some sexy glasses and a short plaid skirt. Okay. Uh, restaurant. This one seems a little desperate to me. This one works whether he's eating uh, alone with a group of friends. Order a side of fries, bring it to his table. Tell him that the restaurant messed up and gave you extra. Ask him if he and his buddies want them. I've never seen a guy refuse free food. If you go to a table with a bunch of guys and offer them free french fries to the entire table, you're inviting trouble. I think you are. Because you're not showing interest in one guy. You're showing interest in a group of guys. Bad move. Bad move. Especially if you're if you're Betty White in the phone. You really don't want to do that. There was my appetite. <laughs> well, that's... You know, uh, all right. I don't want your french fries, Betty White. <laughs> no. Your strong eat french fries. And make him a manly cupcake. This is another piece of advice. A manly... What exactly make him a manly, manly, manly cupcake. cupcake? They have advice for combining... Okay. A cupcake filled with concrete. Uh... Cupcake filled with beer, actually. Once cupcake is cool, use a toothpick to poke 15 holes in the top. Should go halfway through the cake. Then spoon one to two tablespoons of a dark beer like Guinness over the cupcake, frost with chocolate icing. I don't know how that would be. Never even knew that was a thing. I didn't either. I couldn't imagine eating a cupcake filled with beer. I think I can. That, that actually doesn't sound like... Yeah, that I don't know. Like get the cookie maven on the line. 3, 3, 4, 4, 7, 3, 2, 6, 9, 7, 0, 0, if you've got a beer cup. Get, get the cookie maven um, on the horn. Bacon. Guys love any food. We love bacon. We all love, that's true. Bacon, yes. Clearly, Sprinkle part of the pieces of bacon on top of a, a cupcake, particularly a maple flavored cupcake. You are in business. You, you are the, so in business. A maple bacon donut? I have had the maple bacon donut. Yeah, I want to try it. it There's a maple bacon donut? Yes, and it's very good. It must be very good. Where does one get this? Uh, you can get that at your local Dunkin' Donuts, sir. You can also go down to uh, Taste, uh, was it Dandy Donuts Dandy in Deerfield donut. Beach? I was there two weeks last week. They have fantastic donuts, they do. and they should they should sponsor our show. You know what? I, the other night when I, was, <laughs> when I was there, just so everybody knows, they do not take debit under only debit five dollars and up. But so I didn't have cash. And I, so had had buy, had buy extra. Extra. I wanted a donut. I just wanted one, and she's like, "Nope, don't take under five dollars." So I ended up buying four more donuts. See, but you can't. But I enjoy them all. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Dandy Donut. It's it's a it's a fabulous that was fabulous great. donut. Dandy Donut. But there uh, are, there are. I, yeah, Dandy. You know that it's the little little places that are always the best. Yep. Dandy, so we, we'll convert you. We're going to convert you to Dandy. We're going to convert you. Uh, okay. So we've got seventy-five guy truths and twenty words or less. Should we go through these? All right. Sure. Do you guys notice if you put on five or ten pounds? I say five pounds. No way. No, we're not going to notice that. Maybe ten. It depends. It really does. It really depends, right? And for, for me, if, if that actually makes no difference. It, so. it, like, who cares? Five or ten pounds yeah. isn't that big of a swing. You're right. Fifty or a hundred will notice. I put on ten pounds just hearing about those donuts. Now, now I really want donuts. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> mentioned a bacon donut, and I gained four pounds you know, right there. Screw the yeah. show. Let's go get some bacon donuts. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and we'll make some. We can make some bacon uh, mozzarella sticks too. All right. Uh, when I tell a guy nothing's wrong, I'm fine. Does he actually believe me? No. 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 None of us do. Ever. No. Stop it. You wouldn't bring it up if there wasn't. Knock it off. How, do, how does he want me to apologize to him after I screw up? I, mean, I think we all. I think, I think just be direct and honest and naked, I think, is the best I was way. Say, the, the bikini briefs are a good start. Yeah. Fong, maybe? No? I'm gonna, well, not I'm really not for me. All right. What about the, the chocolate me? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let's see. How can I tell if he uses too much gel? If he's from Jersey, he's got too yeah. much gel in his hair. If you touch his hair and it makes a noise, there's too much gel. 
if you if you cut your finger on his hair. Yeah. If you go to run your fingers through his hair and you fall. <laughs> that would be another. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, why can't, uh, at what, why can't guys ever tell when you get a haircut? Because we don't look at your hair when we talk to you. Right? You should. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm looking generally at someone's eyes when I'm talking to them. You should notice their hair. Really? Yeah. I, I notice... I notice Mrs. the Unicorn's hair because and it's you very should make a point of because noticing it's very, her hair. because it's very specific. If Mrs. Corn ever tells you <laughs> that she's going to get her hair done, you make sure you notice that when you get home. I don't think she she enjoys being called Mrs. Corn. <laughs> well, I think she prefers Mrs. the Unicorn, right? Is that all right? Uh, what goes what goes, Lady a, Corn. what goes through a man's head when he sees you naked for the first time? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Everyone's gonna have to answer this one. We wait, all have wait, to answer this. What goes one. through the, the man's mind? Yes. What goes through a man's head when he sees a woman naked for the first time? Uh, usually, I'm just too busy praising Allah to say anything. Else. <laughs> He's praising Allah. Do you actually say Allah Akbar when you sometimes drop it? <laughs> um, always depends. Uh, depends. Uh, Is she wearing depends? Uh, you know what? If it's, I, t- if it's Tuesday at a strip club and she's I, got a bullet scar, it's kind of, you know, that's, that's I would one reaction. Depends. Where's the really concept? On, on the lingerie. I don't know. I'm ta- I don't know. Guys, what do you think? I've never been with a girl. I mean, we're, we're animals. You know, we're all animals. I mean, it's pretty simplistic what goes through our minds. I, I gotta so go clearly what's going through his mind is arf. I've got I've to gotta go back to Kool-Aid and just say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Although... Not when you want to say Kool-Aid because you don't want him coming in at that moment. No. Uh, maybe you're thirsty. Okay. Um, he's usually outgoing, but with my work friends, he clams up. Why? Because okay. nobody likes your work friends. Even you don't like your work friends. That's why they're your work friends and not your real friends. I, I think that's the perfect answer. Uh, why is it so much easier for guys to hook up without getting attached? Because we're guys. Pretty much. You got one because, hand on the door be, the whole time. Because we know that you're wearing a bikini cut, and we want to know if the girl next to you is wearing a thong or boy shorts. That's why. <laughs> the curiosity uh, level of it. We just have to know. I think I think Mrs. Horn is sharpening some cutlery back there. She, she may be. Um, it's a good thing I've got the horn to fight off with. Okay. Uh, if I don't get along with my boyfriend's friends, does that mean he'll think our relationship won't last? Yes. Yes. Right? Yeah, I get to that. I mean, long term, it's it's pretty tough to stay in a relationship with someone when your friends are telling you that she's crazy, insane, and possibly going to break into your house. And usually they're right. They are. And she has broken it's, into your house. It's been my experience. They are, in fact, correct in that regard. Mine, too. And, and just for the record, not Mrs. the Unicorn. I know. Okay. Um, a former corn broke into your house. That one we can call Mrs. Corn. <laughs> that, yeah, we can. We can. All right. Uh, a candy why, corn. Why do you guys turn into such babies when they're when they get sick, even if it's just something like a cold? Simple. We want naked sympathy from you. We want you to want to take care of us so much that you're willing to remove clothing in an effort to try to make us forget that our nose is a bit stuffy. See, I can't really go with that because I don't do that. Usually, when I when I feel sick, I just want to be left alone, so I don't want them like spawning over me. Oh, so I'll just say I'm fine. Just give me, you know, Mr. Tough guy. I'll get over it. It doesn't do with being tough. I just don't like to deal with people when I feel yucky. All right, all right. All right, let's see. Leave me alone uh, with my tea and I will heal. Okay. Let's see. Let's do this. What – What? we've had a lot of – every time we talk about Cosmo, every time we go through Cosmo, there's at least one mention of our favorite item that's in Cosmo. It's like the new Cosmo thing. We know what it is. The jazzling? But jazzling. Gluing rhinestones to your lady bits. Actually, this is real. This is a real this thing. This is a real thing. no. I watched this. He's like, no, it's real. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is real. It is real. On, on weed, they, we, uh, they we, mentioned it. I, I've watched, and if it's on weed, it's got to be well, real. Well, not, not only that, <laughs> you can. not that I would encourage anyone to do this, there's actually bejazzled pornography available on the internet. If you want to watch pornography where the actresses in the pornography are bejazzled, you can go online and find that. It's, it's, it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, so we talk about that all the time, and there's a lot of... Vaginal discussion in Cosmo, obviously. Vaginal discussion would also be a good name for a we, We've had, we've actually used that before. Yeah. Hashtag vaginal discussion. <laughs> We're going to have another vaginal discussion right now, uh, because this is what shouldn't go near your vajayjay. Uh, and is, is it Grey's Anatomy that coined that term? I, that's annoying. I think it was actually Oprah. And first thing I'll on the list, Charlie Sheen. 
Charlie Sheen should Charlie not Sheen go anywhere should near, near anyone's vajayjay. That's the point. I'll give you that. Not really on the list. Okay, but let's go. Uh, what shouldn't go near now, put ladies? NBC, we shouldn't have to tell you what not to put near your <laughs> vagina, but we're going to tell you this anyway because it's that important, and because we want to protect that vagina, right? You've got to protect it. It's very important to us. It's very important to you. It's important to the world. It's the birth center of everything. Despite how much you want to protect it, I'm going to go right out there and say the barbed wire should not go anywhere near. Okay, well, just keep these products away from your, your okay. badge, and you'll be good, right? Uh, you know, there's actually down in, in Pompano on Federal Highway, there's a plaza called the Badge Plaza. I swear to God, V-A-G Plaza. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's just north of Atlantic Road on the right side. If someone's out there driving around, take a freaking picture of it. You've got to put that on the site. All right, intimate sprays. These spritzers are marketed as fresheners and anti-itch products. Wow. But your badge doesn't need anything except soap and water. If it does, you should probably be getting it from your gynecologist. Yes. Uh, Consult a physician if you need if to you spray need things to freshen, in your Yeah, if you need to freshen and, and anti-itch your vagina, you may have more serious problems than using intimate sprays. Um, uh, so made with benzocaine, local anesthetic that can cause an allergic reaction. Uh, can also cause criminal harm by masking any <laughs> unusual odor that should prompt you to see a doctor. Yes, see a doctor. Don't cover it. Right? I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not disagreeing. Should we not? Okay. Uh, temporary ink. Select spas are offering Vatus. Oh, God. Vatus? V-A-T-T-O-O-S. Vatus. Can we hashtag that? Wasn't Vatus? that the guy from Fantasy Island? Uh, that was Tattoo. Sir. Oh, it's a shame. Uh, he was vaginal height, though. He was they, they really missed the boat on that one. Yeah. Uh, Herve Villachez, who was accused of beating his wife. His wife was six feet tall. Herve Villachez was three feet tall. How did he hit her? Did he get on a stool? I don't know. It's possible. Right. Um, he worked for Scaramanga. No, he, he took, guy. you know what he did? He took the plane. Bum, bum, bum. All right. You, you missed your cue. Okay, all right. Uh, select spas are offering vatus. Airbrushed art that lasts up to five days, but the ink can trigger irritation or allergic reaction and makes contact with the thin skin of your labia. If you're tempted to get below the belt cat, whether it's permanent, airbrushed, or fake, keep it outside your bikini line. Yeah, don't tattoo your vagina. No. Not a good idea. Nobody needs that. You will age. As will the tattoo. That's the hope. Not, not good. Uh, jelly rubber sex toys. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we'll just go right past that. Just don't do jelly rubber sex toys. That's yeah. no good? No good. Uh, says there's tons I'm gonna, of great, tons I hope of I kept my receipt. Tons of great sex toys out there, a la Beans. Uh, but ones made out of so-called jelly rubber have substance, substances called phthalates, which some preliminary research suggests may raise your risk of allergic reactions and even cancer. Uh, yeah, you really don't want to get cancer from a sex toy. That would be, no. that'd be awful. Okay. Uh, down there, dye. Surprising your guy with a color change sounds fun, but even a specially formulated pubic hair product can result in damage. Do women even have pubic hair anymore? <laughs> not much. Not that I know. But, but honestly, this is not 1978. Do, they, do women even have pubic hair? But I didn't know that any of them were. I didn't know that any of them were coloring it though. I, I will admit uh, that that the unicorn himself had an ex-girlfriend who who did in fact dye her her pubic hair on a couple of occasions. Some pretty wild colors. I can't believe I'm admitting, I'm admitting this on the air with my with Mrs. the Unicorn in the other room. Wasn't Mrs. the Unicorn? Uh, but I'll tell you the story after after the show. Please don't. Private moment while we're eating in McRib. You know, I think I'm good. Yeah. Speaking of which, McRib's uh, Neil with McRib count is stuck at six. Does Cosmo say what sex toys, if not jelly, are good? Um. I hope that was a woman. That I yeah, I hope that was too. <laughs> there, there's Please tell me that was. Oddly enough, enough there's, there's no Twitter handle on this one. Are you just wondering? No, no, no. It came from Twitter. It came from Twitter. Yeah, that's what who who on Twitter? They will they will not allow us. It was a direct message, so we'll, we'll respect your anonymity. Uh, no, it does not, but go out there and experiment with as many of them as you can and then let us know. It, copper. Plastic it was, is safer, copper, glass. It wasn't my mom, was it? Uh, Again? <laughs> no, plastic, metal, um, even the glass kind, much safer. But if you're going to use rubber kind, use your toy cleaner. And they sell that at any local sex shop. Use your so. toy cleaner. <laughs> Okay, uh, <laughs> wow, I'm glad there's only five minutes left in the show. Scented anything, yes, don't use scented soap, tampons, body wash, or wipes. Uh, I, I saw the other day that they, that they sell scented tampons and different colored tampons. Why? That's what I'm asking. Who needs Why? It? Who, especially scented tampons. Why? I get the color.
color. Never even knew that. Just for, just for a little goofy change. There's colored bacon. You know, remember the iMac came out? Every computer was gray, then the iMac came out, or beige. Then the, the iMac, iMac came out, that colored, makes sense. Who needs a beige? colored tampon? I can, I, I can understand the colored tampon. I absolutely, not that I, not that I think it's necessarily a great idea or necessary. It's not necessary. But that is so much more explainable Maybe. than a scented tampon, isn't Maybe. it? There are. It says right here that there are colored tampons. It's in Cosmo, I believe it. And, and there no, no. are. All right. Uh, I've actually seen them, my problem. This, this one I can't imagine a woman using. Yeah. Badge of depilatory. No, you're never going to use a depilatory on your pubic hair. Why would you want something that's going to rip the hair out of your of your vaginal area? That's because no one has hair just there go, anymore. Just go on a date sure, with Gary Sure, a lot of women would try that. Just go on a date with Gary Busey. That's terrifying. Sprinkle some bacon, you're fine. Uh, horrifying. He'll take care of it before he'll chew that thing up. All right. Uh, v Jewelry. It's not the bejazzling bling. That poses a threat to your lady bits. It's the glue you need to affix the crystals. When it makes contact with your skin, you may be in store for large reaction. So here's the thing, Cosmo. You're BSing us because for months and months you tell us that the jazz is the in thing and that you should go and experiment with it and go to your spa and try it out. Now, Julia Stiles is on the cover. She obviously doesn't approve. And so you're telling us not to the jazz. We're confused, Cosmo. Come on. We need to know, is the jazzling okay or is it not okay? Is it safe or not safe? I know you can break your teeth on a, on a rhinestone. That's unsafe. But for the lady, is it safe for women to do? Apparently not. I'm going to think it chafes. I'm going to think it's a bad idea. Uh, it's got to be irritating. Uh, oil-based lubricants. Yes, you should not be using oil-based lubricants because they can erode. Uh, they actually eat away at uh, latex, mm-hmm. and they can, they can damage... You can do some damage there. And also, too, they're made of petroleum. Don't put petroleum. You wouldn't put gasoline or motor oil near your vagina. Don't use other petroleum-based products. You wouldn't? No, you would not. Another reason why you don't want to use the jelly rubber uh, sex toys, because it's primarily made from petroleum. So So, so clean your get your sex toy cleaner that's right. before they go near your no-no bits. According to beans, that's, that's what you need to do. Um, okay, so I think we're pretty much – we've only got about three minutes left, so – we're almost out of time for our Cosmo segment. I guess we can go ahead and we'll probably start wrapping it up. Real quick, we'll take the Cosmo quiz real fast. you got two minutes to All do right, it. All right, guys, real quick. Could he be the one? No. Your newest, your, newest, your newest man mentions his work holiday party is coming up. First thing that pops in your head, was that an invite? I'm dying to hear his coworkers hyena laugh, and you're telling me this. Why exactly? Or fingers crossed it's not next weekend. I already have plans with the girls. You said that so fast, I have no idea what you're saying. You know what? It doesn't matter. This isn't even a good Cosmo quiz. <laughs> because honestly, I, caller. I hate the whole, oh, do we have a caller on? Nope. No. Nah. Well, we have two minutes left in the show anyway. They're, they're out. Uh, that's all right. So I, I, got, I think it's a stupid quiz anyway because I don't believe in the one. You know, I have a whole problem with that. It, it sets an unrealistic You, you don't expectation. believe that Keanu Reeves is right for you? No, I don't. Um, but I, I he said no to speed, too. I feel, I feel like, good reason, I feel like, He's afraid of Will Buffell. I feel like... Aren't we all? And he didn't want to deal with Sandra Bullock's racist husband who she hadn't married yet. But I feel like uh, it sets an unrealistic expectation that that there's only one particular man for each person, you know, one man per woman, or there's only one person for every other person out there. And it, it can be very damaging when you believe that because you will tend to find any little flaw in that relationship women will then magnify. And instead of trying to work with that or work through and have a meaningful relationship, they just say, well, he's not the one because he's got this one particular flaw and they give up. Uh, so are, you, are you saying that you're a polygamist? No. So, screw that. We're not going to take that Cosmo quiz. We've got about 90 seconds left on the show, and I want to take that time and actually praise our in-studio guest here. I want to praise this fan. Uh, I want to give a thanks, huge thanks to Goodman for putting up with us and coming out and playing some amazing, amazing music for us. Definitely want you guys you to uh, check these guys out on the podcast. On the YouTube channel, we're going to put one of the videos up, uh, and I want you to check our website for, for the links, because we're going to put the links up for these guys. You need to check them out while you still can, and hopefully, can I get you guys to maybe do one song for us? We'll do a bonus for the podcast. Yeah, Is that cool? Awesome. awesome. Um, well, I certainly appreciate that, and uh, i got to tell you, I really, really love having you guys in. Man, I really got to give it to you. I play guitar, but man, you're awesome. Thank you. You really are. I, I love what you're doing. Um, and you can't say much about it. Well, no, I really can. You're, 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 you're coming in, yeah, you're the bass player, and you're coming in playing playing the djembe, man. That's pretty cool stuff. And and again, right on with it too. So you know, I got to give it to you guys. I really enjoy it. Um, we've got about 30 seconds left on the air. Just remind everyone, you can reach us online at frankunicorn.com. Our cafe press store is up right now, so if you've got some comics you want to take a look at, 
take a look at those. And uh, if you're listening to this show on the podcast, stick around because we're going to have a bonus uh, performance coming up. And we'll be on next week, 7 to 9 p.m. on Sunday. We're officially out uh, as far as off the air. All right, here we go. Um, this is I'm really excited about this. We got some bonus material for you guys, and uh, I'm actually excited because Josh, you're 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 playing the famous eyeball guitar, the the Frank the Unicorn eyeball guitar. Now you guys will actually get to hear this thing the way it should be played. Um, well, <laughs> well, I was just referring to the guitar because most people that listen to the show have heard me play that guitar, but you know I, I'm 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 giving Josh a little, I'm putting him a little. You know, he's going he's gonna to pull some sounds out of it that I can't get, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, so here we go with Goodman. We're doing a little bonus tracking right now. Um, it's called Talking Fool. It's called Talking Fool. Yeah, should I like, so they can hear me sing. I don't know. All right. 